Wait, you can still hear me? Yes, we can still hear you. Oh, well, I guess that mute doesn't work, so I should not rely on it. No, that but is a hi. Good thing to find out early. <laughs> but we're live. Hello. Hi, Bones. Okay. <laughs> hi, Bones. <laughs> Bones Perfect. wants to say hi. Yeah, yeah buddy. Perfect. What? Okay. All right. Bones has a lot of opinions about Kratos' narrative arc, and it's needs true. to make sure it's true. we all know about them. Are you just mad because there's no cats in the, the thing? I was about to say, yeah, surprisingly, <laughs> oh lack God. of cats. <laughs> well, Bones has introduced us. Yeah. yeah sorry. <laughs> I apologize. It's hilarious. Hi, everyone. It's It's been a Friday for all of us. <laughs> So I'm going to let everyone introduce themselves before, but quickly before we get started, a reminder, we are going to talk about God of War Ragnarok. We're going to get into spoilers, character deaths, themes, music. So basically, if you have not played this game and plan to you and you stay, you will get spoiled. If you stay anyway, don't tell, don't say we didn't warn you. Also, we're all adults. We'll be imbibing adult beverages and probably swearing a whole fucking lot. Oh no, I forgot you. my adult beverage. You can go you left. Time. Go get one now. Go get your beverage. We'll vamp, it's fine. Tell oh, I can to vamp. Get you one. I got this covered. A husband? Oh, he's <laughs> Tell Bones to bring on. you a drink as much Bones as he Bones ain't gonna thought. do shit. Go get your drink, we'll introduce you last. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to see if PJ will bring me my drink. I'm gonna stay here looking at y'all. All right. <laughs> do you want me to text PJ while people introduce themselves? I'm, I'm Discord messaging him. There's a good chance my husband will not be able to simply because I think he's being a, a space marine. Mm. Hi, but everyone no. on. Hi, everybody. Uh, I've got a snack somewhere, but because it's Friday, th also, we're having fun with this. This is not some super serious academic talk. If you came for that, you are going to be disappointed because <laughs> none of us are academics. Um, but I have a degree, I think. <laughs> I'm an academic. I have a degree in the art of bullshit. Excellent. So we've been. So on I passed all the minutes. tests in school. I mean, I bullshitted my way through both high school and college, so. Um, I forgot what I was doing. Uh, Intros. Yes, Intros. Pilot, you go first. Fuck, that backfired. Uh, hi, uh, ah. I'm uh, 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 Painting Pirate, aka Chris Ganeas, variety streamer, miniature painter, Final Fantasy nerd. I am mainly here to nod and drink because I don't know anything about actual Norse mythology, but I have a lot of weird opinions anyway that I'm happy to just babble on about endlessly so hi that's me zero you go hey everyone my name is zero reynolds aka zero jester aka the kratos you offer you ordered off wish um i do have a pretty heavy background in norse mythology and the poetic and prose eddas and i can geek out about it all day long so this should be fun um, and Kelly's off getting a libation, so until she returns, I'm your host. I'm the one that was like, we should talk about Ragnarok after Zero was like, I beat the game. And I was like, cool, let's go do that. Also, you're befuddling yes. um, Springleaf because she's never seen you. I know, it's so hat. weird. I didn't want to switch my headphones. I'm lazy. I'm terribly sorry. That's fine. And we have a Kelly back. Kelly, who are you? I had the microphone on the wrong side. It's okay. Who are you? Uh, I am a mess. That's who I am. Yes. I'm a professional mess uh, named Kelly. I am the opera geek. Uh, technically still a professional opera singer, even if <laughs> no one's hiring. Uh, voice actor and person who really likes this game and my boy. This is my way of petitioning again for a Jormungandr plushie. <laughs> I mean, Jor Jormungandr body pillow. Body pillow. Yes. Just imagine Co getting signed. on the plane with that. It's <laughs> like, this is my emotional support snake. This is what yeah. you can be. Just saying. 
I will but absolutely yes, roll onto United with a Jormungandr body pillow and dare Don't anyone to ask United, me questions. Lose it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, that's your carry on. They can't take it. They can't take my boy. Um, and I'm your nerd about town, the one that was like, we should have a stream and talk about God of War Ragnarok in depth. So yeah, also a uh, shout out to both Pirate and DC Lasser, which is how I found about Pixel Chat. Which is why we have that not our normal captions tonight so everybody can have captions in one spot um can i get a mod do exclamation guests or anyone in the chat can do exclamation guests so you can get links and follow everyone on screen also their coffee link is in there so you should buy them a coffee for coming and hanging out oh no oh yes no no i just looked and noticed that like the picture that i see is the reverse of what's on the twitch screen so now i'm like am i doing this the right way i don't know okay You're listen fine. this is before the adult beverage i'm on my second today because it's been a day um and also ragnarok spoiler cast if you would like a general warning that we are doing a lot of deep dive talking about a lot of things in the game so again if you are planning to play it if you mind spoilers you may want to just leave a lurk and leave our help with numbers. Otherwise, you're going to get spoiled for a lot of major shit in this game. So, that said... We have no chill. You're going to get spoiled. Nope. Oh, absolutely. No, no. Um, and we may take questions. It depends on how long we go and how we're... How toasty we're feeling by the end of this. Because most of well, us are us by... Does the toastiness make us more or less likely to take the questions, though? I think I'm afraid of how we'll answer the questions, Pirate. That's the part that makes it fun. <laughs> All right, well, fuck it. I guess we're doing questions. <laughs> take, take it and see your... to <laughs> Yeah, welcome to Ragnarok After Dark. Hmm. Oh, shit. Um, Wait, so I... it gets darker? Mm -hmm. Yes. Fimble oh, Winter no. was just the start. Oh, dear. Uh, but with that in mind, let's talk about themes in Ragnarok and um, the the pervading theme, especially carrying on from 2018, is family and loss and just kind of Kratos learning to be a dad and a better person. So uh, before I get deep in that, have all of us have played the 2018 God of War? Yes. Okay. Look, I'm just checking for some people. Ragnarok was their first God of War. Listen, um, I still remember the very first God of War with that super interesting game in the first 15 minutes with, you know, the button. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you mean the, where you got cards for fucking? And the, yep. And no, no, that's <laughs> Witcher. That's Witcher. Oh, either cards way. For, cards for that is, no, this is where you just see the nightstand rocking and it rocks more yep. if you do better. Yeah. You All to, the you red see. orbs. Yep. You okay. smash to smash. Yeah. Get smash the, to smash. Get the smash. But uh, yeah, no. Um, I will stop derailing the conversation. I'm not going to. I can't. No, that's. Yeah, For but. Right now. Yeah. So, uh, with that in mind, with themes, because, you know, just a quick recap of 2018 God of War, you know, we meet Etta. We meet. I have the poetic Etta's in front of me for <laughs> reference. Sorry. Um, we meet Kratos when he is about to. Uh, adhere the last wishes of his wife and you know give her a viking funeral and we meet atreus as a young lost boy who has does anyone know like what is actually wrong with atreus when he start when he's like coughing and real sick in the first one uh, yes yes Go ahead. no no you first <laughs> um that ties in directly with the whole plot later on in the game where you have to go to helheim to get the reagent to actually save him it is his undiscovered godhood at odds with his mortal half basically ah okay also he has tb i've just i've declared that <laughs> it's consumption okay Listen, wow if i can get tb and still sing for three hours before i die dramatically he can go over two games it's fine that's fair that's fair all right no but it is it's a, it's his like immortality vying against the mortality because it, it, they, they they aren't really compatible and because he doesn't know about them i think it's kind of like flipping the switch although does you know he still has it a couple times afterwards but mm -hmm. much less much less and it's very much in tune with the um overall idea of 
first and foremost and 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 rule among the norse being true and knowing yourself knowing the the four parts of your soul and if any of them are in balance if you are out of balance and out of sync with yourself that leads to sickness that leads to mishaps and and things of that nature so i loved how they worked that in in just a very very subtle way with no the kid is sick because you know he's got arcane nonsense boiling up inside him and he doesn't know what it is which is a really hardcore way to go through puberty if you think about it yeah and um like it, i think it also hints towards how dangerous like seriously dangerous it is that kratos doesn't let him know yet because of what he can do without realizing it mm -hmm. yeah you know and and honestly that all ties into the whole theme of you know, you have to be accepting of yourself in order to control yourself properly, which is a huge theme in both those games. Yeah. Yeah. And so with that in mind, the theme continues because like, so, so for most people I've seen play the first God of War, it takes a good part of the game for them to really even understand what Kratos is kind of dealing with. And then if you've played through the first the 2018 game, I shouldn't say first game you see that he's kind of trying to accept Atreus as a grown, as a nearly grown man. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind for the themes of, of Ragnarok, what kind of struck you as you were, as you were playing the game? I like I how we... you. Yeah. I want, I want Pyro to go. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Cause I mean, again, for, for context, when we were planning this, I thought Edo was just the name of the fashion designer from the Incredibles. So oh, I am um, so sake. lost when it comes to, to that level of things. But uh, so, yeah, with this specific theme, yeah, the uh, this is one of those things where I'm glad I had done so well about avoiding like previews for the game as well, because I absolutely went into it with no idea you wind up playing as Atreus solo. So that first part of like, oh, this is, oh, he is, he's going out on his own. Like I had an inkling when the game did the, did the uh, tutorial where it talked about your companion, mm -hmm. not just Atreus. I was like, I see where that's going. But uh, well, I, I had get... seen Freya next to him in, in like a couple of the artworks. So I assumed Freya was going to be our companion at some point, but right. I didn't know we were going to get to play as Atreus with his that's, own companion. Which was right, great. that's exactly it. The difference between, like, you're switching out who Kratos is with, but no, no, Atreus has got his own whole other thing going on. Love that. And, uh, I mean, jumping ahead a bit, the, 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 there's a few elements in the game, the parts with, which really struck me, and the, uh, the, the part where Kratos finally just fucking hugs Atreus. Yo. That, and, and kind of the acknowledgement of, like, yeah, you, you're good. You, the, he reaches that level of understanding of the difference between needing him versus wanting him to be around. And that, that absolutely very much stuck. And the, uh, and from Atreus's standpoint, the, his maturation from, I mean, it's the whole point of his, his uh, sub arc with Odin, with him wanting to you know prove himself, and the the ch young child going, "I'm a grown up," versus realizing what that actually means. Mm -hmm. um, it's not and just the, getting to take a nap whenever you want. It's yeah, like all the and other the bad stuff the the cumulation at the the very end of the game with the trailers is arcing it with if him realizing that yep he is an adult he can strike out on his own and that means responsibility mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it was baked in nicely into the first one because it's not only about these characters discovering what it means to be gods what it means to be a father what it means to be a son um we have the point hammered home again and again and again it's you have to accept who you are you have to accept that change is possible and like Faye told kratos so long ago which is repeated in the first game and in ragnarok we must be better it is not enough to remain stagnant it's not enough beginning of ragnarok with kratos wanting to hide it's literally that growth and that change when kratos tells athena uh, when athena calls him a monster and he says yes but i am your monster no longer it's like i accept what i've done i accept that i can be better and then we run that you know 
unstoppable force, immovable object in Ragnarok, when you have an entire pantheon of gods whose entire shtick with Odin is keeping the status quo, keeping things from changing, preventing Ragnarok, and them utilizing Loki as the key and the inroad into that from uh, Loki Senna in the Poetic Edis, genius. Absolute pure genius. And they made him a ginger, like he's mm -hmm. supposed to be. He's, he, is, he, is, he is a ginger in the mythology, and then you see, like, I have nothing against Tom Hiddleston, trust, but it is... Uh, <laughs> Tanya, your face. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> no, you're not. But but I'm not. Uh, but, you know, the whole redheaded thing is actually a very important part of the mythology and in culture. Mm -hmm. In the Greek culture, redheads were not great, you know? And... Um, you know, all the traits that are associated with it, a trait starts to manifest in the first game. And it's it's pretty interesting uh, to see how they tie all of that in. But it, it, when PJ and I were playing, well, he was playing it through. I didn't start to play the first one until after he did. Um, I think he and I both came to the realization of who Atreus really was about the same time. And we just both went, <laughs> Like, uh, what? And Bones has opinions again. Yeah, Hi, Bones. But yeah, it's, um, there's a lot of deep themes because there are, uh, the Edda or the Nibelungenlied, if you're going to be German about it, um, has a lot of the archetypical heroes and everything else, but more so than, a lot of what we would consider fairy tales, the heroes are very flawed. Even the gods are flawed. And I think that's a, a very interesting um, take that they've done on it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Also, Tanya, you haven't said anything about your thoughts. I think you I, I, I was letting everyone else talk. <laughs> um, I see what you're doing there, Kelly. Uh, it's interesting because the 2018 game was fresh on my mind since I tried to do a new game plus right before this one came out. And... This one really got me in the feels with the theme because family and knowing what's important and growing up, because both characters do a lot of growing up. Mm -hmm. um, and like there's a pervading theme of loss with everyone in the game. Kratos and Atreus lost Faye. Um, they made a canon that Baldur dies because there is an, as I don't know if you can let Baldur live from the first game, the 2018 game. Okay. There is no option. So canonically, Negative. Balder is dead at your hand, and you know, and this is where I have a, I have a hard time with how Freya is, first joins you in this game, where she's basically you know it's not the best way to phrase it, but she is mad with grief for mm -hmm. her son, mm -hmm. even though Balder was going to choke her out. <laughs> you no. know, there there's no if and or but. He was not okay. So there's also the here's Freya with not knowing how to let her child go and grow up because all the things that happen with Baldur is because she doesn't want her little boy to get hurt, mm -hmm. except for the one spot where he can be harmed by mistletoe. Mm -hmm. And then we have Kratos, who is... Okay, so I'm going to say this now in chat. We all played the game. This is not audience participation until we get, until, until we get into Q&A. We yep. know that that happens. You don't need to keep throwing things in there. Also, we are the ones running the discussion. So if someone has a question or clarification, they can ask in chat. But this is not a this is not call and response. We are not in in the meat hall. Um so I am. I, I'm not. I'm in the Scotch Hall. You know what I mean, Zero. Mm -hmm. Um so you know, you have the the opposites of Kratos, while he's not a great dad in 2018 or in this one for a good part of the game, he does eventually learn. He does get better. And then when he talks to Thor, because there's this whole fucked up family dynamic with almost all the characters. There's mm -hmm. Thor and Odin and Heimdall and Thrud and Sif. Like, nobody's family is okay in this game. 
And, you know, we see, I think, like, we almost get a three-part thing where Freya is one extreme of the spectrum. Kratos is the ideal of eventually he learns. Mm -hmm. And then we have Thor and Odin, where Odin is basically the fucking mafia don and kills his own son. There, there are monsters in this game, but the biggest one is Odin. Oh, yeah. It's down. 100%. I did not go into this game, especially even after the first scene. I didn't go into this game expecting to have such empathy for Thor. Right. Yep. Of it. And Odin is almost like the contrast to Kratos, because where Kratos learned, and Kratos, even before he learned to be a more uh empathetic father mm -hmm. kratos at no point put everything on atreus to be because remember mm -hmm. kratos has already lost a family yep, yep. Mm -hmm. he's already lost he's already felt that mm -hmm. grief which most likely has a big reason as to why he doesn't want to get too close to atreus mm -hmm. because at, if i'm recalling correctly and it's been a very long time he literally pulls his own daughter off of him and throws her down to walk away from uh, from paradise. Yeah, from paradise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. So I liked how the the grief cycle was explored with Freya, and how she, you know, said, you know, she doesn't know if she can forgive him ever, but she doesn't actively want to kill him at the moment. Right. And then you know? Because we also we, we've talked, you know, we got Kratos and his family and Odin and that family. We also with, with us, the themes of family and loss can't not address the third family that's involved in Brock and Sindri. I know, I know. <laughs> so again, you know, it's in the title. We've said this before, but again, massive spoilers. There may be cries and feels because. <laughs> Oh, I think it was, I don't know. Well, Catherine's in Adam chat. Harrington, you flipping genius. He so before we go, voice actor. <laughs> before we go completely down the heartbreaking thing, let's, you know, kind of the, the hybrid of the two, I would argue mm. that that particular storyline is because the revelation that what Sindri did is, is very similar to what Freya had done with Balder, with yep. Sindri resurrecting Brock and hiding mm -hmm. it from him. And with Kratos withholding him. information from Atreus, everyone's keeping secrets. Exactly. Yep. So and those secrets are always harming abuse. people. Yep. It's it's showing this game showed in so many different ways that abuse is not just a physical thing. Mm -hmm. Yep. And um, it showed it across the board, and it it did yeah. it so well. Um, because for instance, like, how is Brock ever going to make good decisions for mm -hmm. himself without all the information? You do the best with the information that you have at the time. But, you know, Sindri had to have known at some point that it was going to come out. And I honest, honestly really expected us to have a side quest to go get the final part of Brock's soul. Same. Yeah. And it wasn't oh, they did until that the, deliberately. Absolutely. Yeah, it deliberately. wasn't until the yeah. douchebag came into my chat and had them pop up on my overlay with their their Twitch name being Odin kills Brock. Yeah. Yeah. That um, I was like, you know what? If you derive all your pleasure from me in that much of a douchebag, seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, but honestly, if you think about it, there was no, a, a lot of the game's themes has to do with unwilling heroes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Sindri is the most unwilling. Mm-hmm. He is a bag of neuroses strapped into a tunic. <laughs> he is, I mean, bless I like his that. heart. I like it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Bless, bless his heart. And he, and that's me saying bless his heart in the nice way, not in the Southern way. Right. Um, <laughs> but I mean, across the board, I think all of us have geeked out with each other about how amazing the acting is in this game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Sindri, I don't cry a lot on on stream and I definitely don't do it in public. I was in tears because Sindri just went completely cold, like the complete mm -hmm. opposite direction. And each time you saw him, he was getting dirtier. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that was breaking my heart. Yeah. What I what I especially loved about that was I, I think it was a beautiful bit of misdirectional storytelling. Because mm-hmm. up throughout the whole game up until that point, we've been establishing the dichotomy of Atreus and Sindri and Kratos and Brock. Yeah. Like they each have their own separate things. And we've had throughout the whole game this thing of the the prediction for, for, from the end of the previous game yeah. about Kratos' impending death. So to get that parallel and, and then for it suddenly be like, Brock's the one who, that to, to hit that, to really drive that point home. Again, and, and definitely, they, they definitely were playing, knowing that us as gamers would clearly be expecting a side quest yeah, with those breadcrumbs being trade to go and get that. <laughs> we yeah. knew what you oh, thought, yeah. motherfuckers. <laughs> um, also, I, hi, I mean, Laura. Yeah. Thank you for the raid. Hello, readers. Hello. Uh, I was I was extremely happy because I, of course, within the first fifteen minutes of the game, I was also crying and had to mute mm. myself, and we all know why. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yep. we can talk about it. And also, if you've not played the yeah. game, this is one thing. Where uh, and you have a dog or love animals, you may want to have hard. a moment. Like I felt. I think all of us kind of tried to warn Pain and Pirate, like, oh my god, please be careful when you play this game. It was so hard. It was so yeah. hard. I wanted yeah, to say yeah. something. I so wanted to say something. I will say, too, um, before we move on, we should probably restate, just because the raid came in. Oh, we hey! Restate oh, what we're doing. Spoilers! Uh, yes, we're, we are... we're crying. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yes. uh, but we are having a deep dive discussion about God of War Ragnarok. All of us have played the game. We're all... Ca- we're... we're started with themes of the game or we're kind of going through the topics as we wrote them down for ourselves uh, but laura thank you for the raid i appreciate you uh yes you have come into crycast because we're gonna talk about major character death stuff like that so if you have played the game but not beat it or plan to play it and have not started you will get spoiled also we all have adult beverages and we are not holding back on language so for u.s folks it is very much an after dark weird deep diving into this so uh thanks for coming in thanks for anyone who hangs out uh you do need to be a follower to speak because well people are people unfortunately on twitch but hopefully you'll like it and want to hit follow and now we're going to get back to what we were saying um i will say that the first playthrough of that game when that scene with the wolf happened at the very beginning of the game my exact reaction was to put down the controller and say oh fuck you santa monica (laughs) And both Catherine and I were just bits because wolves are my favorite animal. And I'm just like, you mother, do not up me on this. Do not pull a Pixar. I don't need this shit right mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have the least wolfy dog in the history of wolfy dogs. But, <laughs> you know, that's that's a reach for your dog kind of moment. And um, mm-hmm. it's it's a kind of anybody who's experienced losing a pet, especially if you have to be the one to make the decision to do it it is one of the most heart-wrenching things you can do. So it makes sense that that kind of emotion is what made Atreus cast a spell without even realizing it because he Mm -hmm. wanted so much to keep him. And I actually went and translated the, like I got the translation for what he's Mm -hmm. saying and then I cried more. Um, But when we got to Angraboda and she was like, oh, who's that in your knife? I'm like, I was like, yeah, I know who's in your knife. I know who it is. And if you go back and watch the scene again, you actually see the motes of stuff go into his knife. But you mm-hmm. don't see it the first time because you're not paying attention. Because you're probably you like know? sitting there going, yeah, fuck through the Santa tears. Monica. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like, come on. Um, it's it, also uh, second, I think we should all be open to um, saying things that we want. And I want more chances to pet the dog in New Game Plus. Yes, yes. Yes. Because uh, you, you do get to do it, you know, in the one side quest, but. Um, That's the one time I need more. Literally well, every after the time, game. every time you go back to Midgar, I took Kratos back there mm-hmm. to see if it would let me pet the dogs this time. Oh, and I do love that Freya's like, why are you always screaming at them? Why are you treating them badly? Where's their brush? Why haven't you brushed them? I'm like. <laughs> Dude, oh, on this note, though. Uh, for a post, I, I think it only happens post game because I went and checked. I yeah, didn't notice it, it until does. then. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, no, no, not that. Somebody else. Then, if you go back and check out Fenrir's grave after the game ends. Oh, no, I didn't know. I've not done that. I don't even it's, know where his grave is. I don't think I found it. You can oh. go visit where the original Fenrir body is buried. It is now covered in flowers after the game ends. <laughs> oh, what kind of flower? 
I don't recall. Oh. I gotta oh, go find is this now. That that, where there's you probably get... some meaning to it. Yeah. Language, the language of flowers is very yeah. important. Because there is yeah. a there is a uh, duty to gather flowers. Like the around. flowers. Um, um, yeah, it's um, and and part of the the whole thing with the the arc of cradle. I mean, yeah, if you like, Fulmir just said, if you told me in two thousand five that the God of War franchise would be a still going and b making people cry, <laughs> I would not have believed it. you. Yeah, but that was that yeah. was the exact tweet I made after I finished my first playthrough. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm crying over a God of War game. That was the exact tweet I made. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's absolutely amazing, and and the amount of love that went into it, you can mm -hmm. see that there is love all through that game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like every inch of that game is is just filled. Both of them is filled with it. And if you listen to Chris Judge talking about the first game, when he I know when he starts talking about how he missed so much of his children growing up, and how when he had to talk to Athena, he was actually breaking down. Yeah. Because he he's like you know it gets you and and as a performer, especially stage performer, sometimes those things can hit you in the middle of a thing, yeah. and you'll have done rehearsals and rehearsals for days. It'll get you mm -hmm. all of a sudden. And Zero and I have both done voice acting dubs. You can get emotional in those, but I can't imagine having the camera in your face capturing your face while you do it. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. No, it, it actually made me think of um, Dragon Age Inquisition. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I'm sure a lot of the people in chat are also Dragon Age fans. We're all big nerds. But with Dorian's personal quest... Ooh. And the story that David Gator tells about it being in the being there when the v, and I'm blanking on the man's name. I'm so sorry. Uh, when the voice actor recorded that, a he did it in one take, mm -hmm. and there was not a dry eye in the room, especially in that moment where this grown man is confronting his father, who wanted to fundamentally change who he was. And that mm -hmm. moment is kind of what kept coming back to me as I played Ragnarok. Mm -hmm. Because you can see, like, in the clips, or if you watch Raising Kratos, which is the documentary about the 2018 God of War, you can see the emotion and the tie and the fact that he treats... who I'm blanking on real names today, but the the young man who voices Atreus... Sunny, Sunny Solchik. Thank you. Sunny. You can see the care and emotion and connection between him and Sonny and you can't fake that you mm -hmm. can't that's not you could tell this was not just a job to anyone on this game yeah it and, was love this is literally a labor of love yeah and you can see it and uh I know that they tried to kind of broom Chris uh off the stage. Oh yeah, no, no. <laughs> yeah. At the Game Awards, but watching him finally get a chance to give that speech. Yes. And when he talked about when they said, "Oh, Corey's not the director," he was like, "Deuces, I quit," and they had to make mm -hmm. him come back. That shows you how much mm -hmm. trust they have in each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to be that vulnerable, you have to be able to trust. Like you, you have to be able to trust your scene partner. You have to be able to trust the yeah. writer. You have to be able to trust the people in the room. You know, it's, yep. it's a complete like stripping down. The only other game I can think of that really does it is Hell, uh, Hellblade. It's Ooh, the same call, kind yeah. of, same kind of thing. And, and in her case, she wasn't even an actress originally. She was a stand in. She was their community manager. Senna was actress. This was the first thing she'd ever done. Damn. He was a stand-in. And um, obviously did a really good job. So they <laughs> yeah. kept her. Um, but it's that same kind of... They have to create... I know the, the, the term safe space gets demonized and villainized in so many weird ways when it shouldn't. But... Even, especially if the scene is very emotionally or physically taxing, yep. it has to be safe. Mm -hmm. You know, and you can tell 
how much went into the connection between these actors, even in Raising Kratos, where Chris Judge is like, hey, Sonny, did you miss me? He's like, nah, I hate you. And I'm yeah. like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, look at him. He's all grown up and trying to be sassy. Um, yeah. It was it was a real shocker, actually. At the end of the game, when you hear uh, first game Atreus start talking again, you're like, who's yeah, that? Yeah, wait a and second. You get so used to <laughs> <laughs> yep. Teenager, <laughs> you're like, oh god, you grew up. What happened? Um, but uh, since we're still kind of talking about families, we're we're gonna keep a little bit of the theme going. But I wanted to talk specifically yes. about Sandry and Sindri and Brock because mm -hmm. you know, like the first game, we're like, oh, that's so cute. They're brothers and they hate each other, and we get them to get together. And and then you see the depth of feeling and love that Sindri has for Brock. But like we said earlier, there's also an abusive aspect because he didn't tell Brock that Brock that he had actually died mm -hmm. yep. and that he was missing part of his soul. And when you get the spear of Dropner mm -hmm. and the lady oh. will not speak to Brock. Yep. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. I And Brock is crude. He's crass. He's like that uncle that nobody really wants to invite to the barbecue, but <laughs> he shows up anyway. <laughs> Yep. Oh, come on. You He's know how oh, yeah. is. You, you say you don't oh, yeah. want to invite to the barbecue, but, but you, really. give him the you give him the invitation yeah. when no one uh -huh. can. You know? And but, he but, brings the good shit. And yeah. the, outer, then, the outer aspect, too, because Brock looks different. I always want, like, in the yeah. first game, I was like, why is he blue? Mm. And then, mm -hmm. you know, it's a visual representation of what's not there. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, now that I think about it, when we go to Svartalheim, none of the other dwarves are blue. They're all. No, no. Like, it's also. What? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, it's also a holdover um, from smithing. It's 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 a type of mm -hmm. mercury poisoning, which I yep. love that they included yep. that shit. Oh. Yeah. Then why yeah, wouldn't Sindri blue. be poisoned? Because they both are. Because smith. he cleans because himself all the time. <laughs> Sindri is an absolute yep. mm -hmm. neat freak. And will not uh, gloves all the time. Um, mm. One thing that struck me, because um, there's so much growth in this game, and there's so, so much character development, and only the people who really do not adapt end up dying. Basically, yeah. um, the fact that yes, they do come to a place before Brock dies, where Brock is effectively like, I know, right? Um, you gotta let go. And you gotta let go. But it was a lovely bookend, even though it broke my damn heart, that Sindri lied about not being able to get Brock's entire soul back. But in the end, with Brock's death, he lost his own. Mm -hmm. Okay, I missed where he couldn't, where he lied about not getting his soul back. We he he, kept he the lied by omission. Yeah, he yeah. lied by omission. Oh, I thought you meant, you meant he literally could not get his soul back. He could not get that last part of the soul back. Man, every time we saw the well, I was like, but please. Get okay, right there. On, do it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. And then it Fuck it. Happen. Throw in the fishing line. God. Um, yeah, it's. Uh... Oh, and I do like the fact, especially coming from. Um, and I, I realize it's not all Western Christian, Judeo-Christian beliefs that believe this. But I don't know if any of y'all had people when you were kids tell you that your pets don't go to heaven, which I argued all the way down. But immediately when they were like, the first question that came to Atreus's mind is, is Fenris there? Yep. Or Fenrir there? Fenris. See, this is because I hang out with you too much, Kanye. <laughs> I haven't even played Dragon Age. Well, it is. At, well, no, it is Fenrir. I take that back. Never mind. Yep. But, um... <laughs> Okay, tying it back because something you said earlier, Kelly, yeah. stuck with me. I wanted to kind of revisit it at this part, the point about how a lot of the, there's a the theme of kind of familial abuse and the cycles of abuse. Yeah. And about how it, abuse isn't always malicious, but that doesn't make it any less abuse. Yes. Hurting and, someone by trying to protect them is still hurting them. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's rough, and I think uh, Danielle Basuti needs a shout out here as Freya, mm -hmm. um, for despite all the times I called her Froyo, because... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's stuck in my head. Wow, I'm sorry. Uh, you're my favorite kind of Froyo, though. You probably got like rainbow sprinkles on and everything, but oh um, it, the 
the anger never goes away. Mm -hmm. It's always simmering in her discussions with everybody. Everything mm -hmm. um, has that undercurrent until she kills or starts to kill Odin. Mm -hmm. And she's, I, I think it's very interesting that she almost had him with the noose. But it's almost like a visual representation of the idea that revenge doesn't always turn out the way you want it to. Yeah. You know, uh, but um, yeah, continue. Yeah. I, I can talk too much about this. <laughs> Another aspect of that that I loved was, yeah, she goes through that whole arc, but then there's the little elements peppered in throughout the post game of the, the whole, just because she has accepted that and moved on doesn't mean she has not hurt people. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. One of the scenes I loved, we got a little opportunity to revisit, was if post game you go back and revisit Charlie. Oh the, yeah, the mm. guilt trip that that turtle lays on <laughs> on Freya. <laughs> I mean, back to camp. I told you to go back to Freya's camp. Did you go get him his new friend? Yes. Okay. okay good. good. Yeah. <gasps> <laughs> we can't let the turtle be by himself. <laughs> no, no, he's yeah. We no. can kill an entire pantheon mm -hmm. of gods, but the turtle must not be alone. Damn oh. right. Um, for me, yeah. especially, you know, thinking thinking on that, you no know, cycle of abuse. You know, I don't know. I feel like Sindri. By the time by the time they reconcile in the 2018 game, mm -hmm. and going on to Ragnarok, I feel like Sindri is so afraid of losing Brock either by his own action in action. Cause I feel like there's a fear and we see it in the scene where he goes down to get the ring of drop mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Where he is terrified and he, and we realize, and we realize later that's why he didn't want Brock to go. Yeah. And it's like, Oh, Oh, his little house of cards was going to come tumbling mm -hmm. down. And that's why I love in the the changeover from directors I read, like one of the only things that was passed on the the, the instruction of this has to happen was yeah. Brock's death. That being one of the only things was like, no matter what else you do, this story beat has to happen. Yeah. He's, he's, he's the only character that would have had that level of impact. Behold, the least wolfy dog. <laughs> he looks like a Muppet right now because he needs a haircut. But... Oh, oh, oh. He has a stand-in for Fenrir. You look like you look like Wilfred Brimley. Um, and it just that hurt. I mean, mm -hmm. I had put that that terrible person who tried to spoil it during Kelly's stream mm -hmm. out of my mind, but it's it's not just betrayal because guess what the tear that you meet is not really tear <clears throat> surprise which i never picked up on it until I didn't the changes <laughs> yeah the, and then the... you go back and watch it and it's like a beautiful <laughs> magic trick and then you're like, like, son of like bitch. i fucking knew i mean i didn't know immediately <laughs> dc you're still playing this game just keep in mind we are good at getting into deep spoilers because i know dc is still playing it so just keep in mind we are getting into deep spoilers if you don't want certain story beats ruined for you. Uh, I don't know how long you've been here, but we are getting into spoilers. Um, yeah, but, there were a couple giveaways, but... Which yeah. to give DC a moment, too, I didn't, I didn't make any connection about Atreus being Loki at the end of 2018. Like that, really? I didn't realize that... No. Again, I'm not as near as versed in Norse mythology as the rest of you. So I didn't see that coming at all. I think it's I'm because when she found out that she's that she's giant, that's when it really kicked in for me. Because, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's Loki's. Can we all just have a moment, though, that we didn't get our six-legged horse friend? Because I'm still sad about the six-legged right? friend. Where the fuck is Slipmere? I don't know. But because... he's on a mural. He's on one of the murals. He slept yeah. <laughs> Thank you, pirate. God fuck damn sake. it. But, oh, um, just for so... that, you have to give out gift subs. Yay! <laughs> so for I will say that the thing that got me for tear the the, the first seed of doubt mm -hmm. as to whether it was real was actually in the scene directly after you rescue him. Really? Oh, when he rises because up and stands over the, Kratos. No, the Ain Harry do not chase him. That's right. Holy shit! The 
and Heriar come for Kratos and let Tyr run right by him. Oh. I, I didn't even clock that because I just thought, you know, gamification. Of course, they're going to show up and fight us here. But no, that makes perfect sense. It's because I was like, well, why wouldn't why wouldn't they chase? Why would they stay after, you know, for this guy? Yeah. You know, if this is Odin's number one enemy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think what threw yeah. me off was the fact that you do mix it up with them and here after the fact. And I just thought it was like, again, a gamification thing. But then later on, Tears escaping Europe with him, and then some Einher Yar do show up, and there's a little bit of fighting, but not much. And but then he actually mixes him. up. Exactly, yeah. And again, they I never was thinking. Once attack him. See, I just thought that was Damn. all. I, I, I just thought that was really driving home the fact that he wasn't who Atreus thought he was, and it was. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was being a contrast in yeah. Atreus is going down this dark. I mean, path. well. It wasn't who Atreus thought which, she was. So. Which on the, well, on the, but especially <laughs> even more so after reading up on what some of the cut content was. Oh, right. And how Atreus's path could have been way darker than it was. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, no. And also, I, I will note, that was just me going, well, why aren't they? That wasn't me immediately mm -hmm. knowing what was going on. It was right. just one of those. Sure, yeah. Kind uh, the, of the, like the, how the time travel aspect mm -hmm. of my son. You me of my son um, was yeah. immediately evident in the first game mm -hmm. because who blew the flipping horn to call him from the lake? Yeah. When Atreus mm. was sick. Which and I, and I you've think is too... future Atreus. It's future you've had the, uh, And you've had the, um, you, you said too, you've had that extra experience of going back and what, getting to watch PJ play it through fresh and now getting to kind of watch those scenes knowing mm -hmm. it. You, you said you were sitting there going like, I see that now, like picking up the little tells, kind of going mm -hmm. back through. I'm excited to go through a new game. And the tiniest for that little myself. tells. Yeah. Like it's tiny, beautiful. Tiny, tiny background tells. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 and the reason they work is because it's things that would be completely natural to happen. And so you yeah. don't clock them. Mm -hmm. You're just like, oh, yeah, no, that's normal. But and that then... goes back to how well it was written. Yeah. yeah, some of the lines and the delivery of, of Tears voice actor after the fact, when you go back and watch them, they're delivered in such a certain way, it takes on such a different, beautiful context when you know what's about to happen. You're like, holy shit, that's good direction. Fuck yeah. me, it can go either way. I love that. He also has a different cadence of speech when yes. he's himself in the in the jail, which makes me wonder. I'm I'm really sorry, Richard Schiff. I keep almost calling you Toby. I apologize. <laughs> uh, because that was, I turned to PJ when I saw him. I was like, it's Toby from West Wing. He's like, that's not his name, Kelly. Um, <laughs> but uh, it almost looks like he watched how Richard Schiff delivered his lines because yep. he has the same emphasis, which means mm -hmm. that it's more Odin only ever thinks about the surface. Because all he, all he ever thinks about is, his, is himself. Mm -hmm. um, he's a very selfish person. So he never bothered to really actually be the person he was pretending to be. You yeah. know, and I think that's a very interesting, interesting thought. I don't know. I just, I like looking for things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I gave well, him a mohawk. Um, oh. <laughs> Well, before we get too deep in the weeds, um, I wanna I wanna talk about Angra Boda as well. Yes. Because um, a the racist got real mad that she was a black yeah. chick. So mm -hmm. fuck y'all. She's not real. <laughs> True. Whoever. Well, yeah. let's not forget the same people were mad because it was someone played Heimdall in the Marvel movies. Mm -hmm. yep. And I'm sorry if you're a fucking god, you can look like what you want. Just the and... thought. Don't try to take Idris Elba away from my vision. Thank you. And but, you know, the fact that... <laughs> so this is where I will have a slight bone to pick with the game because mm. going back and reflecting on Anger Boda, she slightly veers in the magical Negro trope because she, she teaches Atreus how to be a better person and how to be really a giant when you sit back and think about it. Yeah. She's like the wiser than wise, even though she looks like a young 20 something late teens. Mm -hmm. She does take on the mantle of teaching Atreus 
how to see the other giants mm-hmm. as people because he doesn't know anything about the giants because Faye is gone. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. I'm wondering though if that was because I absolutely see your point. I didn't think of it that way. Um, like I didn't I not think of that way. I didn't see that until now that you what you're saying. But part of me wonders if that character and all of that story was written before they cast the actress. Or doesn't after. matter. It's how it comes exactly. across. Uh, it's how it comes across. It's, my it's my only across, yeah. my only saving grace on that one is it's you usually have the magical Negro trope showing in as a tchotchke. It's a Deus Ex Machina. They show up, they teach, they solve a huge problem, etc. And, et then, they die. and then they oh. die. Anger Boda <clears throat> is not crucial to the story and and a a moment where she saves the rest of the characters until she learns from Loki not to blindly accept fate it's one of those situations i think where it comes across that way because of the lack of other black characters in the game like that's mm-hmm. that's what it is it's because she's basically the one yeah but it definitely that's veers close on that god damn which is like why it is does. she the only uh, you know why why were none of the other giants black like we, <laughs> girl, we didn't exactly see them and we, we don't know if like, they are or not you know it's, but it's, that's something you could have established it's especially yeah. like in in even through the murals you could have established like a variation of skin tone in that like it possibly could or have the dwarves we see mm-hmm. the dwarves yeah. right. or There's, just even people in midgard because yeah. we do see people in midgard a lot in the 2018 game yes and so i don't know that was just like my kind of I love this game. No. I love this game, but yeah. mm, but but I haven't talked about that online because, as we know, it'll be why are you making it about race? I don't I get a see. choice, fucker. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, you shouldn't. It, it, you're not required just because you love something to ignore anything. Oh, I know that, you know, Kelly. But oh, I know you do. Right. I'm just saying people seem to think that it's all or nothing. Oh yeah, well, that's not it's, how this works. It's like I did the long, I did a fucking long thing on Twitter about this with uh, regards to Final Fantasy 16. As loving something means you want it to be the best it can be, and that means calling it out when it's not mm-hmm. doing that. Yep, because mm-hmm. uh, off top, mm-hmm. well, slightly off top, but Final Fantasy 16 is it director creator Yoshi P? Uh, he's the director, Naoki yeah. Yoshi, uh, Naoki Yoshi, the Yoshi P. Yeah. Yep, Yoshi P. Basically, is like, oh well, historical accuracy, and I'm like, it's a fucking yeah. game with dragons and whatever a Moogle is, really. <laughs> and also, guess what? There were plenty of black people in Europe. Yes. Like they, they act like they did not, like, like they just mm-hmm. magically appeared one day. That's not how this mm-hmm. works. Look, um, there's a lot of people who think slavery is the first time we appeared anywhere. There's literally a, a, a black man in the King Arthur legends. That's because you've been outside and read a book, Kelly. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I've educated myself. <laughs> this was your mistake. Tragedy! Um, I also want to check in because we've been going about an hour. Does mm-hmm. anybody need a break? Want a break? Are you good? I mean, I'm fine. I, I kind of I, I want to address one thing, two things about Anger Boda because I was actually talking with Dimples and Dice last night because mm-hmm. we were playing Back for Blood. And we were talking about one of the characters in, in that game, Sharice, and how the, the character designers for that game took the time to actually not, as you've often talked about, Tanya, giving like two hairstyles to the black character and not like making an effort. Um, anybody who sees Angraboda in this game and then tries to make the excuse that black hairstyles can't be done. Mm-hmm. I mean, that excuse went out the window with Dragon's Dogma, a 10-year-old baby. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, as somebody who does love the original Norse mythology, I was wondering how they were going to address the fact that Angerboda and Loki are supposed to be the parents of Jormungandr. Yep. And boy, howdy, was I up. happy when they put that soul of that giant <laughs> into the snake under yeah. Grandma's house. <laughs> I was like, my like, boy! <laughs> He's leaving. Oh no! And um, uh, which, shout yeah, out to and Kelly then, though, because Kelly pointed this out after I'd done the final battle. The hmm. Yormi that you see during that final battle is not the Yormungandr you met in the 2018 game. Nope. nope. And, and I wouldn't have realized it. There's an argument to be made because as he's slithering away, he's actually getting bigger. If you watch him yeah. slither away under mm-hmm. the basement, there's an argument to be made that the Yormi at Ragnarok wasn't too far past that time like that he was fairly young in, in his new skin that. 
uh, because his hatred was still very fresh for Thor. And then he gets the bonk on the head and goes back in time. And I was wondering, because that was my only holdup with the who blew the horn theory. Because mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, time travel. You know, I mean, they haven't really introduced. Oh, wait, there it is. Yeah. You know, um, and it's mostly his beard. You can tell because he doesn't have a beard at Ragnarok. Yep. <laughs> his beard, he doesn't have that at Ragnarok. I think um, similarly, too, with uh, there's also kind of an argument to be made that there was a nod to the uh, them being the parents of Fenrir as well. Yeah. Given that it's Angra Broder who points out that Fenrir's soul is in the knife, which is what allows him then to to put it in the garments. I love that little, like... The garm yeah. fight hurt me. And yes. I am still team. Every single year I say this, team stop making us kill dogs in video games. Yeah. The uh, fact especially that... Was a... that Oh, the end. Of, oh, God. The yeah. fact that there was a second phase to that fight is the one point at which I actually just yelled out, oh, fuck you at the game. <laughs> so, no, I had to look away. Know. Like, I think somebody might have clipped it. Um, uh, I looked away. I would. I didn't watch uh, Kratos mm -hmm. Strangle Garm. I couldn't, no. I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. But as soon as Atreus was trying to say, hold him still, I was like, I know what this guy's doing. And then, mm -hmm. as somebody who grew up with Great Danes, when he did that little, they <laughs> all do that. Yeah. I made me they so happy. They all do that, and they do the big, and the lips coming down on the ground like that. I don't know whose dog they used as reference because I guarantee you they used a real dog as reference for that. Oh yeah. Um, I want to meet that dog. <laughs> Yeah, my Malamute used to do the exact same thing mm -hmm. with the whole sneak, 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 sneak. Does uh, uh does Kyrus do that? He doesn't do the the sneak, sneak, sneak thing, but he does do the whole like put the paws out in front of him and rest his hand on them. He can't like do sneak, sneak, sneak because he's only already five inches off the ground. <laughs> he has nowhere to go. No. Uh, I did put it in chat. Obviously, if you're hanging out and you don't I love those pictures. that, mm -hmm. but there is the the goodest boy this is post game when you go back to jotunheim mm -hmm. but i was and i think zero was in chat when i made that when i do, i will deny i made this noise <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, i made this, you noise. made this noise yeah i didn't know i could reach that, that octave when i saw you this. made the exact same noise because i was in chat for you playing through him becoming fenrir uh, uh again and you made the exact same noise when he was doing the sneak, 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 sneak. It is ironic that during those scenes, you reached a pitch at which only dogs could hear you. Hey! Wow! <laughs> I mean, wow. Wow. someone who routinely makes those with those now. Uh, now I have a good microphone out there, so now mm -hmm. I don't have to mute myself when I make those sounds. Everybody's going to get yeah. to hear them. Um, no, it's just... I, I enjoyed the fact that also Fenrir did not die. Mm-hmm at the end at Ragnarok that mm -hmm. Yormi got knocked out of the fight, but not killed. Mm -hmm. And I will fight every person who says that when he slithers away from Sindri and Loki, that he goes to die. Mm -mm. No, nope. I'm like, he's just going back to sleep. He's a snack. That's what they do. He's hibernating. It's fine. Yeah, he, was he, going probably ate, the he probably ate like six years ago and he doesn't need to eat again for another three years. And it's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's how it works. But um, no, it's uh, it's just there's so much to talk about in the game, mm -hmm. and I, I know that this is skipping ahead a topic or two. But Barry McCreary, you absolute genius! <laughs> yeah, sorry, we, we can all just sit. We can all just sit back a bit because the next twenty yep. minutes are all Kelly. <laughs> no, <laughs> yes. I'm not gonna, I've already I've already monopolized way too much. But like, no, we're Bear, into it. <laughs> I love this. It's music. This is your time to shine. The fact that da, 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 you hear it from the beginning of the first game, and it's a recurring leitmotif, but you don't know who it belongs to. Yep. Until the second <clears throat> game. Mm hmm Because the first time you see her hand come around and touch his chest, it starts playing, and I'm like, hmm? <laughs> and they use that theme um repeatedly both transposed into a slightly more minor key mm -hmm. um and they intersperse it they, 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 okay i say they bear mccreary <laughs> 
wraps all of these themes together. Yeah. In such uh, a way that you the, the music becomes the family. Mm-hmm. Hey, Trihex. Uh, quick thing. First, congrats to Trihex. He beat the Berserker King. Hey! Yeah, right. hey. That guy's a bitch. It took me like three and a half hours. <laughs> uh, but welcome on in, everybody, from Trihex's channel. We are doing a deep dive of God of War Ragnarok, although if you've been watching Trihex, I know he's beat the game, beat the Berserker King. Congrats, because I was there for a long time lurking while you tried <laughs> to fight that dude. I have not done it, so congrats. Uh -uh. But also, anyone who came over from the raid, if you're planning to play this game yourself, we are getting deep dive. We're talking about music right now. We have been talking about a lot of the character deaths, a lot of the serious stuff in the game and our feelings. So just be aware in case you are planning to go back and play this game yourself. But uh, the Opera Geek was talking about music because that's her jam. And I did that it, on purpose. It is my jam. It is my jam. Well, and I don't know if you call Opera a jam. A jam, rather. I mean, it's, I, mean I guess it was a jam to Mozart. I don't know, but... Um, <laughs> like the Mozart house music. There you go. Um, oh my God. but, uh, it, the, the way Bear McCurry uses leitmotif in the game. And for people who don't know, a leitmotif is basically a theme that is either attached to a character or an idea that will play recurringly in snippets or in full when you see that character or the idea referenced. And it's a way of subconsciously putting that character in your head. Mm-hmm. So once you know that that's Faye's theme, also, I will be the person to admit I didn't realize why she was called Faye until way too late in the game. Please explain, because that did not click for me. Laufey. Oh my God. Laufey. 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 <laughs> I was like, gosh, dang it. Well, then again, I was also the person that goes, oh, that looks like Deborah Ann Wool. Oh, it, it is Deborah. It is Deborah. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I got when I got to Swartle High, that looks like Bear Mc That is Bear Yep. Hmm. Okay. Oh my um, god. I feel so goofy. Why? Oh. Because I didn't pick up Lao Fei's son. Yeah. Yep, you're fine. Um also to make the highly musical nerd joke, the fact that someone whose screen name contains Berlioz came in as I'm talking about music is just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Berlioz um, came in on the Trihex raid. But the the mixing of if you look at Faye's theme, which is da 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 da, da and then you hear, which is very melodic, and then Kratos's theme is like anti melodic. Da, it is very da, bomb, da, bomb, yep. bomb, 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 bomb. Um, it, it when they finally come together because they both are interwoven into the Ragnarok, the the song they use at Ragnarok. It's just so brilliantly done. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't really have a lot of words for it, even though I, I supposedly have a degree in this shit. Um, there's not a lot of words that can convey how music makes you feel. Music is usually used to convey how music makes you feel. <laughs> And music is a language. Mm -hmm. And I think that Bear McCreary, he, he understood the assignment. <laughs> he really knew what, he uses that music as a language. Mm -hmm. And whether or not you even know what's, go, what, what's going on, you hear that and you're like, oh, okay. And it's in your head and you don't even know it. Mm -hmm. And it's just so freaking beautiful. Even even the, the Holger Brothers theme. Oh God, God damn it! Because the the two of the two melodies mixed together, they're by themselves originally, and then they mix again. It's so great. Ragnarok, the the theme that was played at Ragnarok with those mm. late motifs colliding, it felt to me just from a pure storytelling sense, mm -hmm. like a duet. It is both Fay and Kratos's culmination of what they have been striving for from different ends of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And when I first heard it the first time I went through there, I kind of just paused and let all the battle happen around me. I'm just like, <laughs> you fucking genius. I hate you, Bear McCreary. <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? Well, yeah, and also, one of the things I tell people a lot when they say, well, I don't go to opera because of the language barrier. Mm -hmm. First off, most of them have super titles now. Seriously, go to the opera. Secondly, if I'm doing my job right, I always tell people, if I'm doing my job right, you don't always need 
the subtitles. And that's what I mean when I say music is a language because Faye's theme is beautiful, but there is that one moment in the middle of it that is almost painful to listen to. And that's because she knows she's going to be dead. Yeah. She knows she's not going to live to see her son grow up. You know, and once you realize what that is, it just like rips your heart out and stomps on it and then like puts it back in without cleaning it. And then you have to watch Brock die. And then you're like, well, whatever. I'm just yeah. going to go to bed now, I guess. I don't know. I'm be sad. Yeah. You look, you're <laughs> like, it's 5 p.m. Well, I guess I'm going to bed and crying. Yeah. I'm like, oh, good night. Uh, but seriously, and, and I linked y'all a blog. Um, I, I should have grabbed the link to put into chat that Bear I'll McCurry actually put on his website. It's oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's really great. It's really great if you have time to go read it. It's mm -hmm. really nice. This cup is very cool. Uh, while, while I am not a professional singer by any imagination, uh, the one song, and keep in mind, I was listening to this on my way to LA for the Game Awards, and mm -hmm. it was real hard not to start crying on the plane was Blood on the Snow. Oh, God, that song, that track. Um. <sighs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, hold mm -hmm. on before before we get too deep in in the woods. Um, I I was a looking for the blog address, but also because I saw the video for it, and I actually watched the deep dive into the music that they did on the PlayStation uh, Twitch and YouTube channels, mm -hmm. and I cannot remember the guy's name, but he's the one who does like the funk and bass versions of a lot of. Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I will freely admit, you know, uh, getting to watch that live was a whole different experience. I am so it, jealous of you. Well, it's also muted on my VOD because uh, Pirate is good enough <laughs> to stream for me because I was at the Game Awards. Look, um, and and our friend DJ Knight got to meet Bear McCurry just randomly around oh. from the hotel. Mm. I don't know if I would have been okay i like i didn't freak out when i met chris judge i was like dope bro Wait, you didn't think about that what uh, you didn't know that I'm it was a very brief me. meeting Goodbye. it was like he was clearly trying to go back to his room yeah. but he saw dave in his drip b dave walters in that drip that he wore wore for black dice that's and, fair and then chris judge was wearing like all gold everything yeah. And it was just like yes, a chance because my meeting. husband loved that suit. <laughs> that's right. that was an amazing yes, suit. Thank you, pirate. Um, but you know, it, it's one of those things where like DJ ran into Bear McCreary, and DJ knows Bear McCreary's music from way back when, like Stargate. I only discovered Bear McCreary because of God of War. <laughs> um, so it was one of those things of like music has always re really, really been important to me, but I don't get a chance to talk about it much. But for whatever reason, Blood on the Snow hit me in every fucking feel from every direction. And I was like, I hate, but I adore you, Bear McCreary. Why would you do this to me? But it feels like Chris wants to say something and I keep yelling. No, I do. this is the conversation which I like music. It makes my ears happy. I do have to point out one thing. Bear McCreary going ham. In front oh, of a live audience on the yes. hurdy gurdy, yes. the most metal fucking thing ever, and 100% the energy I'm bringing into this new year. Um, yeah. um, also, let us not forget Alto Flautist because he was amazing. Um, oh, god, yes, but uh, I will say that the line that is very interesting to sing without getting too emotional without saying that I'm looking at that song um is the bit where it says it's not my arms that will fail me but this world takes more strength than it gave me i'm like yes yep. mm -hmm. it does yeah. thank you very much <laughs> yeah it's 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 brilliant and again it's it's one of those things where kratos's theme comes through halfway through the the song and you hear it and you're like oh yep there it is yeah yeah and you know speaking of kratos and music Although this was a silent scene, it was the it was the moment where Kratos actually looks old. Yes. Oh it, yeah, 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 yeah. It's after Atreus sneaks off with Sindri before you play as Atreus. I am tired. 
I'm tired. It is it is uh, Kelly's Twitter header, and it was mine until <laughs> today. Um, but it was just it was you forget how much shit Kratos has been through. That mm -hmm. this man is a god. He does, and it feels like he doesn't want to even be a god at this point. He just mm -hmm. wants to settle down, raise his kid. That's all he wanted when he settled down with Bay and Atreus. And even that was robbed from him because I forget what it. I don't know if they ever say, but what kills Bay? They don't really say. They just kind of. It's consumption. God damn it! It's, it's always TB. <laughs> yeah. It's always TB, um, but. They don't really say, but it's obviously something that she knows is coming. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's, he looks so old. And I think it's because, you know, like I said before, he's already lost and buried an entire family. Mm -hmm. He's lost and buried all of his friends. Mm -hmm. And now he's about to lose another Atreus. And it's, it's, I think it's all that combined with the regular thing for, I mean, I'm not a parent, but mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of my friends um, as their kids are growing up, realizing that they have to let go. And that's, of course, brings us right back to the ways that you hold on that can be so abusive mm -hmm. and that you yeah. have to break that. And I don't think we could really, even though this is mostly about Ragnarok, I don't think we can really talk about how beautifully acted the game is um, and how well it addresses trauma and what it does to you without talking about um, Jeremy Davies as Balder. Because that was a real, you always hear Balder talked about in the mythology as a beautiful man that everybody the most beautiful, loved. Yep. And he was kind and everyone loved him. So to see a much more human take on it, whereas this person who, instead of just, it's, it's not just the ability to die that her spell took away from him, he can't mm -hmm. feel. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. And there is actually a real disorder that is like that, where you mm -hmm. cannot feel pain. Yeah. And it's, when you watch things where people who have it talk about it, it's horrible. Because they don't get pain cues, they don't get anything. But imagine living like that for an eternity without being able to feel anything. Yep. Yeah, and look how excited he is when he actually feels something from fighting Kratos. Mm -hmm. And uh, yep. I want to make sure that, that Chris and Zero get thoughts, because I have thoughts too, but yeah. I know that I keep like hopping in. So I'm well, going gonna, gonna to mute myself, actually. No, you're good, because I'll hop in, because you know, we're talking, okay, go, now we've gone back to that topic again of you know, abuse and, and manipulation mm -hmm. and facing up to past mistakes, because the one character we haven't really brought up at all up until this point is Mimir. Oh, shit, you're right. Who is a broken oh, man. And especially in Svaldrofheim, it's constantly just assaulted with the consequences of his own mistakes. All time and Svaldrofheim, both of them. Yes. Oh yeah, definitely. And yeah. I was like, it was it was fascinating watching you play through uh, Cypher the stuff with the the giant turtle, because oh. I played through that. When, well, because <laughs> I did that when I first got to Svaldrofheim, mm. and so it was interesting watching the the slight differences going through it with Atreus versus you oh. going through it with Freya. Mm. Oh, it's God. it's interesting how because Atreus is the one driving a lot of the pushing to get the the turtle free because that's his whole deal with the and mm -hmm. yeah the with that and but with, with the turtle and with the smokestacks and just how it's 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 fascinating to watch Kratos be the one to guide Mimir to the realization that he got used to the chains you yep. that you can't always fix it mm -mm. some of your mistakes you are stuck with mm -hmm. and mamir in particular um in the first game smartest man alive um coming from a place <laughs> almost of the moral high ground and that's why i absolutely loved particularly in Svartalheim, of him coming to terms with oh no oh no, your soul ain't pure and yeah. now this fallen greek god of war is the one that has to bring you back and that for me cemented more than anything else that came before it mm -hmm. that these two are now brothers this yes. is now a family they are family mm -hmm. 
and they are accepting themselves at their worst. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, the fact that the Mimir calls him brother almost from the minute his Mm -hmm. head is revived. Oh, oh. (laughs) And I'm just like, and and the suggestion that Mimir. The suggestion that Mimir is Celtic is hey, very um, interesting. I love yeah. it. I I I didn't know I needed Alistair Duncan as a severed head telling me the story. <laughs> <laughs> but I did. Yep. And mm-hmm. the best part is I just kept sledding in circles because I'm like, and on stream, I'm like, is he is he saying Macbeth? And then by the time he got to the end mm-hmm. and said we don't even say his name, I'm like, you theater kid. You're such yep. a theater kid. Mm-hmm. You don't say yeah. the name. Um, I think personally, because I know that there are interviews where they said that there was a five game arc planned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they are very specifically saying this is the last game in the Norse pantheon. Mm -hmm. I want them to go over to Britain. Yeah. Ooh. Huh. So I I want to talk about that actually, because that we talked, you know, about where the series goes from here. I think they have to be extremely careful. Oh yeah. And I think going to Britain is one of the few places they can do because there's a bunch of other pantheons, but they are going to have to be incredibly aware of the optics of either Kratos or Atreus, Atreus going and slaughtering certain cultures' gods. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if they go to Britain, they, I mean, you can just land there with the Tuatha Dé Danann or can and just have fun. Kratos versus the Knights of the Round Table. Oh Where my God! The round table? Kratos versus the <laughs> summer or winter courts of the Fae. Yeah. That would be great. Mm-hmm. Um, um, of course, my as soon as I start to talk about Morrigan facing down Morrigan. Morrigan, oh, that would be interesting. I did, ha- I do have to point out because I saw it in a tweet and it made me laugh so hard I almost cried. He said, imagine Kratos going to fight Jesus and he kills him. And every time he just keeps resurrecting and saying, I forgive you. <laughs> well, Please don't fall that's out of the to, to jump back to though, I actually question if we're going to get Kratos <sighs> as the character in future games or if it's going to follow Atreus. Because with the ending of Ragnarok being Kratos is now the builder. Kratos is hanging out in the Nordic Oh, I think class. we will. We, so have, we have to see him being worshipped. Well, right, but that but that implies to me: Are we going? Is Kratos going to be the one going off and slaughter and fighting other things, or is it going to be Atreus doing that? Or is he going to go off and not be slaughtering things? I think Atreus would not um, slaughter anything because he's too soft-hearted. But what I love, though, and I also don't want to forget about talking about Thor and Odin oh. and Brood before we start opening the questions and start throwing out our theories for the next game. Atreus, he is the, and not soft, that, that's not the right way to phrase mm. it. He, when when Kratos keeps saying we need to be better, especially when he mm. says it to Thor, when he does not want to fight Thor that second time. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, oh my God, if Kratos can learn this fucking lesson, mm-hmm. Why can't anyone else? Because Kratos has seemed like the most hard-headed motherfucker we've ever met in a game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Thor was so close. I think the he difference. So close. The difference is Kratos doesn't have somebody in his ear other than himself, constantly telling him he can't. Well, there was also the revelation before that final fight with Thor. Uh, mm-hmm. Thor, sorry, Thor, um, <laughs> where Kratos flat out tells his son in a complete 180 from the first game no open your heart to their suffering yep. fucking kratos is telling them mm-hmm. your empathy your sympathy is your strength i i literally put down the controller at that point and i'm just like yeah. gobsmacked i'm like holy shiza well that's why we're talking about places the series could go from here and um um Something Prax uh, just mentioned in chat kind of hits me as well. I don't know who play if uh, how many people played God of War three. Gre- Greece is yep. fucked, and it's largely Kratos's fault. Why do you I think he ran of, away? <laughs> I want to see an arc where he goes back and tries to fix it. Not again. There's a whole lot of, we just talked about the mirror arc and how things some of these can't be fixed. But I kind of want him to I go back that. and face what he has done. You. Ooh. 
like he kills Poseidon, Greece gets flooded. Yeah. Like that type of situation. Like as he kills, like he kills, I think it's when he kills Hermes, I think it's the plague hits. Like each of yep. the Greek gods he takes out in three, devastation falls upon Greece. I and mean, it, really, he would have to go back and take responsibility. The new Kratos is telling everybody to go back and take responsibility for your actions. Well, that's kind of what, that, again, that, exactly. I, I think that's the logical part of his story to, to go, is to return to Greece and face At least they finally gave done. him a Greek weapon. Yep. <laughs> but you had to go through so much shit to get that spear. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, you, you did, you did. But um, also, the, the, the other... That like like Tanya was saying, we haven't really touched on um, on Thor and Thrude mm -hmm. and Sif, and mm -hmm. you know actually the Lung the Lungbacher. Uh, that's how you say it. The that bit is that the it thing really, in the in Yeah, because someone the, asked um, in chat and I wasn't sure. Um, this game said, "Fuck toxic masculinity." Yes, and I mean it almost said it verbatim. Mm -hmm. Because he was saying Thor is only like this because he was abused. Yep. And you know, then his sons were like this because it, because what what makes him finally lose it against Kratos and lose that fight is when Kratos tells him you're the one that killed your son. Mm -hmm. It's your fault. And um, I I almost I know you you described Odin as a mafia don. Yeah. I, I can kind of see it. Oh, he walks in. That's total good fellas. Come I, on. I, come see, on, I think come on. I think because of the fact that I just keep seeing Toby and his walk and talks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Don't die. Here. I'm not sure for that. Um, <laughs> he's a wheeler and he's a dealer. Mm -hmm. He's a politician. I mean, mafia is on politician to make it to mother. Yeah. Like that's you know. Yeah, <laughs> like I grew up in Chicago. Not a difference. <laughs> that's, true. that's true. It's um. Hey, Ferwick. It's definitely not the Odin. I will be. I will tell you right now when they announced it, and I was like, "We're gonna fight Odin." I was like, "Where's Ian McShane?" Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's Mr. Wednesday, Odin from American Gods, and a ton of other things. So when I saw it was Richard Schiff, I was like, <laughs> "What?" It's not really the, <laughs> yeah. the look mm -hmm. that you expect. But holy shit, did he do a good job with that role? Mm -hmm. He just he leaned hard instead of being the you know, I'm going to force everyone to do what I want because I have all the power. I'm just going to talk them into doing what I want. Mm -hmm. And it was. To me, it was an amazing choice character-wise. Oh, yeah. Way it, out of left yeah. field, too. I loved yeah. it. Well, and, and you know, in part, if you want to jump in, please tell me, because, again, I've talked a lot. Um, but, you know, from when we meet him and he goes, are you, re are you reasonable, Kratos? And then Odin mm. just shows up, does mm. the arms wide open, Hugin oh, and Mugen so come back to him. <sighs> yeah. And oh. just that kind of, take care of my lightweight energy he has when he walks out mm -hmm. of Kratos' house. Mm -hmm. That's why I was like, yeah. okay, it's the fucking Sopranos, but Ragnarok. Mm -hmm. But don't um, take too long when he walks out. When he right. says, don't take too long. It's like, mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, it's an hour into this game. Fuck you, Sony. Wow. <laughs> Can I like, my house got fucked up in the first game when Baldur showed up. Now we got to do this again with Thor? Really? Mm-hmm. But, the house. Oh no, my what what is that? What is that thing from mm -hmm. uh what is it like my potatoes or something like that? The the guy in mm -hmm. Avatar. Oh my cabbages, my cabbages. My cabbages. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's 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 one hundred percent because the just the way Odin talks to anyone in the family, through notwithstanding, because granddaughter, mm -hmm. they're not family members. They're his fucking lieutenants. Yeah. One hundred percent. He tries to tell her to her face that she did not see what she just saw. Mm -hmm. Yep. And yep. people like to use the word gaslighting in a lot of wrong ways. Mm -hmm. That is gaslighting. That was it, yeah. He was is trying to tell her that what mm -hmm. she just saw did not happen. Mm -hmm. And if it did happen, it wasn't his fault. Mm -hmm. And you see, you can actually see through for a second just kind of, because sh she would have been used to this. Yeah, I I was not prepared for Sif to come out 
and say, yeah, no, it's all true. Your grandfather's a shithead. Mm-hmm. I wasn't prepared for Sif and her giant ass hair. To be like, <laughs> I mean, it was it was some pretty big hair. And if you, if you don't know, if you go back to Svartalfheim to the canyons, you actually uh, get to see through it again. Um, you get to see her find Mjolnir. Yep. Yep. I did not know that. I have to go do yep. that now. Yep. You get do, to see her find Mjolnir and take off with it. Mm-hmm. I do think if there's one of the Asgardians that got done kind of dirty, it was Sif. I feel like yeah. Sif could have had a, a fair bit more agency. Like it, maybe just some, a few things to like. You could just there's a few sections where you can kind of listen in at the door of her, like arguing with Thor or stuff. Like that. I feel something. I don't know. I just I felt I I couldn't say what it was, but I felt I just would have liked. She felt like scenery for the most yes. part outside. He does in the mythology too. I know, but it's one of those things where just they changed so much other stuff to to give nods to the mythology, but also change it. I feel like that's one of the things I would have maybe liked to have seen something. Yeah, I, I mean, I did enjoy after the game um, that you can see that she's one of these, I don't want to say just women, because obviously not just women, but in this kind right. of mythology, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> she's one of those women that everybody thought she was just being quiet and submissive, but what she was doing was listening and learning. Yeah. And... Um, also one of the other things, it, d- it depends on who you go there with, but they do say that Sif, uh, is an alcoholic yep. who is trying to not drink anymore. So, and she was trying to get Thor to not drink anymore. And I think the reason Odin keeps coming back and trying to push all this stuff on them is because he knows that's how he can control them. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I do agree with you. I would have liked to see some of the other female characters have agency in mm-hmm. the game. Freya, wonderful story arc. Mm-hmm. Wonderful story arc. Um, wonderful way of coming around to the, the realization that she has lost a son but gained a family. You know, it's, it's, yeah. but it, it did, it, it almost felt like it was out of left field when Sif was that verbose. Right, that's because what I mean. Like some sort things. of like build up to it. Some even if it's just the, like little things like that we could have found to read. Yeah, just mm-hmm. we may be I, looking at another cut content situation, like what happened with possibly. Atreus in Absolutely. the first game. Yeah, entirely possible. Again, I, I, wait a minute. The, is the one okay? thing. That, hmm? I just thought of something hmm? very interesting. Who? <laughs> Who did the mistletoe thing? They don't explain that. Because in the mythology, it's Loki that goes and talks to the mistletoe. Because mm. the mistletoe is the one thing that nobody... Because that it's nobody too young said. and too innocent to take an oath. And so Loki's the one that said, no, you can go. You can just take part in it. So who did that? Huh. Well, it I'm was assumed. it was assumed the change in this one because... If you remember Freya's reactions in the first game, she just says they're flat out evil. So we've already had a 180 from the original mythology where she's like, no, they're too young and innocent to be able to take this oath. Which and a change that, that something's there, yeah. Something's there. And then the change, of course, that it is in the mythology, it is Loki who gives the mistletoe dart to Hult, mm-hmm. who then throws it because he is blind and he does not know any better. So. Yeah. That is a good question, though. Because Loki don't do his own dirty work. Nope. In, in mythology, well, except unless it involves banging like random people, animals. Things. Yeah, well. That's so what everybody crack up when they're like <laughs> the, the people that that got all bleh, because there are any themes of same sex relationships or anything else. You have the gods that just are like, I don't feel like being a boy today. I'm gonna be a woman. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm also, be a horse. But also, <laughs> let's not ignore our own background and mm-hmm. the mission that is there. Mm-hmm. Um, for those who don't know, and the tweet's far back, if anyone can find the tweet, go with God and anime. But there were, there were, I almost had a pair of men. That sounds so weird, even before I got out of my mouth. There were <laughs> husbands who were working on the game. And unfortunately... Yep. Uh, uh, yep. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. I'm just like, that sounded like you were actually in physical pain. Yeah, I try am. not to cry, lie down, cry a lot. Um, yeah. But their husbands were working on the game, 
And one of them became terminally ill and passed away before the game released, obviously. And the surviving spouse still worked on the game, still was Sony Santa Monica, and asked, was there a way to memorialize, you know, his husband in the game? He thought maybe there'd be an NPC or something. No, there's a whole quest line, and it's about traveling and finding home and love with each other. And the background of our stream is a screenshot from finishing that moment where you complete the meal and you go and there's a hearty pot of stew there. And it was a reflection of how they love to travel and try new things and enjoyed each other's company and found home and love in each other no matter where they were. Yeah. And the two stools. Yep. Yep. Two stools, the whole story about, you know, how they were each searching for for ways that they could find meaning in the world and then they suddenly realized it was them. They were the meaning to each other. And I'm just like, this is going to break the soul that I don't have. Because the, it's so beautifully done and the fact that he didn't know until the game came out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That he just didn't know. And I'm like, it's it's just, it's so beautifully done. And it fits, it fits with the game. Uh -huh. 100%. It fits the theme. It fits the theme of people finding family, people finding love. Because Kratos, I, I don't think Kratos really knew how to love so much because he never opened himself up to the hurt. Mm -hmm. That's why he shut down so much. Yep. That's why the scene in the tent where he's telling Atreus the bedtime story. Oh, yeah. And he goes to check on him and he goes to touch him and then pulls back like, ah, I can't. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, my mom had never seen this game played. And it was when I was recovering from surgery that somebody decided to uh, send me a PS5. Uh, can't imagine. <laughs> that. Um, but, uh, and then also roped somebody's husband into setting it up before I could get home and try to return it. Um, yeah. Oh, I didn't can't know about imagine. that part. Yeah, I can't. Oh, no, when Beautiful. I got home, when Beautiful. I got home, it was all set up. PJ and Tanya had been talking. Topic. Stay on topic. No, <laughs> you know who I am. Um, well, crap, now I forgot my topic. Anyway, so my, uh, my mom's watched me play the first part of the first game because I did the whole stream. And my mom, who loves stories and loves watching video games and stories, she's just she's getting agitated. And I, I stopped playing right around the time they leave the forest, but she's getting agitated. And finally, when they look out over the forest and Kratos reaches out and almost touches him, oh, my mom's yeah, like, damn yeah, it, yeah. just touch your son. And I was like, mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, it's just it, it, the payoff for, for the fact that he then again doesn't touch him that time mm -hmm. because he doesn't want to wake him mm -hmm. right oh my god just it's, although can we talk about the fact that just as a side note nobody thought there was a little weird about sigurd wanting mimir's severed head in her tent with i her. chose I wasn't to ignore say that it. nope consenting adults <laughs> and consenting adult heads i'm not saying shit <laughs> I'm just you know saying what? the mirror has a vibrate function, so you oh, know. Oh God! Shut up! Just... No. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Tanya, I didn't say that one. You can be mad at him. Well, there's yeah. no questions in the chat. I'm Nobody, and I'm. Yeah. I'm missing the context of what Rybert and Fuel are talking about. Oh, oh they were they were talking about. Of... Yeah, it's tying in the, the whole Loki being a shape changer that he can be man, woman, whatever the fuck he wants to yeah. be. So Lo Loki he is, is the mother of Slepnir. Is the He's mother the of Slepnir. Okay, yeah. because all the comments said was before the MCU, and I'm like... Well, it, it's, it was tied into, if you uh, scroll up, this Happy Kaiju's comment about Loki not being Slepnir's dad. Yeah. It's a direct ah. response to that. And the yeah. fact Got that there's, there's comics on the internet of Slepnir writing out Mother's Day cards to yeah. Loki. Got it. it was before the MCU because uh, after the MCU, Yoki, Loki being the, the Tom Hiddleston kind of affable, goofy type of thing is mm -hmm. has that's the public interpretation of Loki. So it's 
Got it. He, so he that was, even was more not of a together thing. in my chat. So I'm like, yeah. Fuck <laughs> <is that talking about?" laughs> no, you're good. It, makes, it, it, it made context like, and sense. Stay yeah. together. So I'm like, right. What the fuck are y'all talking it's, about? Yeah. In the wider context, it makes perfect sense. But there is one thing. Alone. I, it's, yeah. <laughs> There is one thing I wanted to touch on, um, and this will lead into any eventual discussion about what the next games might bring. Because we've talked a lot about the characters who are losing something and finding something they weren't necessarily looking for. Mm. My favorite part of all of this is the bookend with Kratos and the new revelation on the reverse side of that Mm. final panel. Because here we have a Spartan who made a deal with the God of War to save his own life, who then went on to be a God of War to spite the other gods of Olympus, who thrilled in conquest and blood and horror, even after it cost him his own family and potentially might have cost him another family along the way. And he finds something he could not even remotely have imagined was possible, that he would be a God of peace for the people. And Christopher Judge's performance in that moment broke me. Holy shit, did it break me. And it ties into Odin's speech earlier. Mm -hmm. Odin's speech Mm -hmm. where it's like, you you don't know what it is to be a God, you, you little you little whatever i can't remember what he calls mm-hmm. me he's like you don't know what it's like to have people adore you you don't know what it's like for people to pray to see you and everything else and then he sees that image and just oh. the shaking and he starts shaking and i'm like uh uh no <laughs> and even mamir comments on it when he closes mm-hmm. that door mm-hmm. uh mamir mamir knows i think mamir is honestly kratos's closest they don't talk about too much about the intervening I think it's like three years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But it seems yeah. like Mimir and Kratos, that's probably the closest friendship he's had since his soldier friend. Oh, they yeah. explicitly say it. Like it's mm-hmm. it's not spoken dialogue, but in some of the, the codex content. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Um, oh, you like, mean they're journaling? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Like he explicitly says he's the one person he he referred to as brother. Like that's he's, he's bullet journaling. Yeah. I was like, somebody yeah. buy Kratos uh-huh. some washi tape over here because right? he's Aww. like Going to Which town. Happened? Yeah. Because it's both question. of them. It's both of them. If it you is. look, they're both writing. And it's... Yep. yep. Let's not go into how my mirror's writing. We're just not going to think about it. Well, we know how it with pen in his mouth. Yeah. You see it a few times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and if you go and read all of the little entries, some of them are hilarious. Yes. For one thing, the the Kvasir's poems are all nods to other PlayStation games. Yep. Um, including uh, Zero Dawn. Um, but the ones that I liked are about the trolls that were stuck in limbo, like oh, yeah. frozen, because the guy who keeps sealing them, he, he gets more agitated with each entry. <laughs> and by the end, he's like, up. Overseer AS, AKA, stop making me write this shit on stone tablets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the little tiny things like that, I think. High bones. High bones that mm-hmm. you needed because the game was so heavy emotionally at times. I'm glad you said that because that's that actually was going to be my question that I was going to ask for all of you because I want to help to kind of bring it back up a bit because we've talked a lot about the heaviness and the, the mm-hmm. way the game attack actually feels. It was also freaking hilarious in places. Oh god yes. Because <laughs> I've got to lead in with mine and I was curious what the like your favorite like comedic moment of the game was because for me it's absolutely post game when you go back to Jotunheim and Angra Boda says how Atreus is a decent artist, but he needs more discipline. And Kratos is just. I like little, this one. <laughs> I like this one. Yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. It, it's definitely for me going to be the Macbeth moment, and I think not yeah. because it's comedic to everybody else, but because it was comedic to me. <laughs> and I mean, I will sled for hours in circles to have Mamir mm-hmm. keep talking yep. because it's so well done mm-hmm. there's so many little, and by the way they, they totally are saying that he's from where we think he's from because he sees the kelpie and recognizes it so, yeah oh yeah oh yeah well i mean one of one of the norns literally calls him puck so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah so oh oberon and titania he could go kill them mm-hmm. that would i would not be mad 
Nope. Honestly, they can just, um, but I think comedic wise for, for the second game is definitely that I do find the fact that they took something, which let's be honest is because this, the game also deals a lot with mental health, uh, without openly saying it. Sindri has what a lot of people would categorize as a mental illness, which would mm-hmm. be severe OCD. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I didn't understand really the payoff for it until mm-hmm. it, the visual was used to show how he was breaking down. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. I thought yeah. we were talking about funny moments. I know. <laughs> Tanya, what's your favorite funny <sighs> moment? When Tear stands up to his full height and looks down at Kratos. <laughs> like, Cause, fucking cause, really? All right. Because you see, I mean, you see it before you ever play the game, but it's just like, oh, because we have this idea that Kratos is this giant of a man. Mm-hmm. And then Tear is like, that's cute. <laughs> Which, yes. incidentally, Kratos in game, God of War and God of War Ragnarok, is only two inches taller than I am. Mm-hmm. How He's do you not know this? Huge. No. Because I was watching, uh, I watch behind the scenes shit all the damn time. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm that kind of nerd. In the comics, he's described as, I think it's uh, seven foot eight. And in the game, both Corey Balrog and the animators are like, nah, he's six four. Mm-hmm. See, I didn't know that. I always, I always felt like Kratos is presented as this like, holy shit, this man is at least seven feet tall. Right. Yeah. Because Which, of the, oh, on that. The, yeah. I will also say, and I know Zero, you're going to back me on this. I was so fucking happy that Thor's design was far closer to you and I than it was to Chris Hemsworth. (laughs) Yes. Someone I can cosplay. Hallelujah. (laughs) Well, why wouldn't Thor look like that? What does he do all the time? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) What does he do all the time? And also the fact that it kind of ties into an all. I'm blanking on his name suddenly. Boba Fett's actor. Um, uh, I, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah uh, when, when, Mara, uh, Tamara Morrison. Yes, yes, because there were some, some absolute not bright people online. Were like, why they got this guy? He's not muscular. He's just kind of chubby. And I was like, he could wipe the floor with you. <laughs> if you've never seen like a haka or anything. They don't have to be muscular to scare the shit out of you. It's also, you don't and, know the difference between functional muscle and bodybuilding muscle. Yeah, it says, as soon as as soon as the Thor design came out, and there were people like, oh, it looks like Dad the dude God, from, blah, you know. Blah, blah. I was like, no, you've clearly never seen a power lifter, have you? Yeah. They're a bicep <laughs> with legs, okay? Leave them alone. <laughs> Look at the guy who plays the mountain in Game of Thrones. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Incidentally, he has a toy Pomeranian. And he carries it around in one hand. I am not even joking. <laughs> oh my That's god! Amazing. Actually, it makes and me his think girlfriend is like five foot four. But Aww. anyway, like I, I, I wanted to talk about uh, my favorite funny moment from the game, yes. and that's literally when going after uh, a legendary chest in um, the <sighs> desert of all time, when Mimir specifically says, "Oh, it's a liar." You know, I'm I I'm a, an accomplished liar player myself, and Kratos just says no, and I prefer to keep it that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, damn. Oh, I did Kratos. love the, the brief exchange with Kratos and Mimir talking about how Mimir taught Atreus to woo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Yeah. When after again, Endgame, so after they see uh, Atreus and Angraboda together. Uh, oh. Kratos just has that moment of I never really taught him that aspect of life. I remember Mir was like, I got it. I got yeah. you. <laughs> and then poor Kratos is like, oh, this poor child. He's been forever. Um, I think I'd be remiss if not pointing out for funny moments, you know, the uh, mysterious orb that you have to go find in all time that turns out to be the dog squeaky toy. Oh my yes. God. Yes. <laughs> yes. I love that dog. That I was that amazing. So much. That chonky, like, uh, she can't stand up. Let's be honest. Nope. She's overfed. She's mm-hmm. a little, a little bit too big. But the fact that for the rest of the game you see her with that squeaky toy half hanging yes. out of her mouth, I'm like, it's so good. Okay, I like it. While I was very glad and it was like, okay, this is cute. As I did that mission, I cussed everyone and their <laughs> spirit back to Hellheim. I was like, 
I because I I I don't know if I was streaming it or if I did this off off screen. Oh no, you were streaming it because yeah, I was, you were streaming I that was on, I was on chat with you and I had muted myself because I was like, I can't tell her it's right there. I can't tell her. It's well, right also, there. I I got to the end. I'm like, I did all this for a fucking dog toy. That's the best. I would walk to, do to it, the though. ends of the earth for a dog toy. If, if yeah. Okay, but it. I didn't know that it was a dog toy. <laughs> I really well, thought it was like some yeah. magical, like, oh, this is going to be some talisman that helps me. And I was like, mm -mm. it's a fucking dog toy. Like, if I didn't know it was a dog toy, I would have dropped everything else and done that immediately. That would oh have become God. priority number yeah, one. It changes the context a little <laughs> bit. Um, also, if we're going to talk about, about Alfheim, we have to, not Alfheim, I'm sorry. Um, oh my God, where's Freya from? Um, Vanaheim. Vanaheim. Thank and you. Frere. Frere, and Frere. Yeah, Frere. Oh, God. I'm going to leave you all for a hot second and go to quick uh, bio, um, but I don't think everyone... that's fine. Cool. So you all I have the think... calm. Please do not do anything. I'll regret. <laughs> um, We're innocent. I think that we can't talk about Vanaheim without talking about Birger being a fucking badass yeah. jumping off the side of the boat. And there is, he is saying actual, thi like, that's a translation that he's speaking in the original language. There is a translation for it. It's like a death prayer. Yeah. And he's just like, see ya. We'll say that was my minor gripe because that was one of the few translations in the game that was 100% accurate. Mm -hmm. The rest of, I'll, I won't say the rest of, a lot of the old Norse in this game is unfortunately very Yokiro sandwich. <laughs> unfortunately. It's also, Which, um, yeah, well, also the grammatical structure, too, because his, yeah. what he's saying is a surviving thing that we know. Like, Oh, yeah, that's that 100%. Yeah. Um, kind of like 13th Warrior got a lot of weird things oh going on, God. but they right. actually got the low there I see my father part correct because mm -hmm. there's extant things about that. I oh, yes. If y'all could start a hype train. While yeah. Cypher yeah. is gone, that would be while, lovely. Thank you. And so while we're much. doing that, I was because I did see two questions in the chat. One of them I want to wait until Cypher gets back because I want to. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Question yeah. about Rafiki's question about small de details Easter eggs. We'll wait till Cypher gets back for that one. Um, I see there's the question from Fulmir. Do we think it's possible in the next game we will see Kratos end up in Rome dealing with the Roman versions of the Greek gods? Uh, we touched on a little bit. Personally, <laughs> I will say no. I don't think they're going to retread that because I think that would invalidate a lot of the stuff in God of War 3. I would much rather see Kratos deal with the fallout of what he did in the third mm -hmm. one. Yeah, I, I think it would be interesting to see him deal with the fallout. I also think that because so much of the Roman gods are just... Um, the legally distinct versions. <laughs> yes. No, you know what you know what they are. <laughs> the Greek they're gods that, got on wish. <laughs> they're that little comic where it's like I made this, and then it yes. Goes, <laughs> I made this. Yep. No. Welcome back. Nothing has happened. No. Um, Hi. Nothing has happened. Yeah, Everything is fine. Happened. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. How are you? Okay. So we have questions. Um, so the, now that you're back, I'll address Rafiki's one, which was: Is there a very small detail or Easter egg that truly surprised you when you noticed? God, there's like a few. Of them. Yeah. There's a lot. Uh, uh, I will say for mine, I'll, I'll kick one because the the one it's it, it was one of those things where it was just oh that's really freaking cool. Mm -hmm. The fact that Cavassier's poems are in Brock and Sindri's house. Mm -hmm. That there is a shelf that fills up the more of them you find. Oh shit, there is. Mm -hmm. yep. Huh. <laughs> oh, also the real time um, returning of all the little wormlings. Like yes. you look over the side, mm -hmm. they come back one by one. Also, let's let's be sad for just a moment. Again, I really, I did not want to kill big secondary snick, world tree snick. Ah, uh, yes. Um, oh, yeah. I didn't want to do that, but it also meant that we got to see Ratatosker and him climbing all over Kratos. <laughs> yes. Need hog. Need hog. Need hog. Um, but him. <laughs> What smells so good? <laughs> like I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's here, so do you want to taste it? No. <laughs> <laughs> that oh. you know, Mimir being shoved on the cart. Oh god. And they're god. like, no, it's gonna be fine. <laughs> it's like, oh god, it burns. Um, I don't know if it's an Easter egg, but I know Pirate and I were talking about this. The utter glee of Mimir having to serve as the Bifrost. <laughs> 
talisman. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yep. This is, that's payback for every puzzle he tried to hint at after literally 10 goddamn seconds. Uh, <laughs> and the fact that, you know, Kratos says specifically to Sindri, I also used it for light. Oh. <laughs> yes. Because I, I, honestly, most of the, the some of the funniest lines are Chris Judge just being deadpan. Oh yeah. Oh god yes. Oh god yes. yes. And um, yeah, it's so, some of the best stuff is just him just being like this and delivering a completely a line that would not necessarily be funny if you didn't understand. There was the one Easter egg that delighted me um, uh, as a student just of, of Norse mythology. And it was the fact that they gave uh, Heimdall gold teeth. Yeah. <laughs> that also, delighted the fuck out of me. I don't think I also that, that he's a dick. Yeah. I didn't so in, that. Yeah, yeah, that's he why has his teeth look so teeth. gross. It looks, at first I was like, are his teeth yellow? Oh. No, they are gold plated as, as they are in the Eddas. So Heimdall's yep, got they're... a grill. Oh he's yeah. Grill. He's <laughs> back in a grill. Yeah, wow. um, he's another one that Odin just messed up, man. Woo! Oh, fuck mm -hmm. Odin. Yeah, I mean, true, but you also then think if Odin hadn't gotten a, a hold of him and given him that prophecy thing, would he have been as messed up? Probably. That? Uh, but also, he, he reminded me of a lot of uh, uh, people with um, affluenza. Uh, mm. <laughs> which you know, they do all anything they want and get away with it. Mm -hmm. oh, um, the only thing to say nice to say about Odin, he's not Zeus. I mean, you're not wrong. Yeah, that, well, that's correct. that well. is correct. That's yeah. It's uh, it, I think yeah. I mean, oh, and also that you can keep ringing the chimes in Yggdrasil and just yes. Right <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the fact that Bitter Squirrel is Troy Baker. Yep. Yeah. Because mm. he's in the game. It's like, because you're like, well, you know, now Magni and Modi aren't here, whatever else. But he's like, yeah, that squirrel, he was almost like a completely different version of me. Hey, Bitter, do you want to come here? Fuck off. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, can we have a moment of silence for the fact that they put actual anxiety in the fucking game? Oh, the hey. way I was personally attacked by anxiety is. That's right. I don't have to care about what you think. You, you don't matter to me. I hate you. I love you. Bye. <laughs> so I was just like, yeah. here, right here. Just, just mm, here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I regret so hard not doing the berserkers before the end of the game, though, because now you don't have a trace anymore. You also don't have the Radatoska summoned, which carried me through fucking 2018 God of War. I believe it. I don't know how effective they would have been. Just, so you, I mean, you all know this. And, you know, again, shout out to Trihex for defeating the Berserker <laughs> King. I put the game on the easiest fucking setting when I had played on normal for the rest of the game. I could not make a dent in the Berserker King. It's brutal. Fuck I haven't tried hell. the Berserker King. I haven't tried He's... the Berserker. I took out. I've beaten Nah. Yeah. I have not tried the Berserker. He's worse King than yet. Nah. I'll believe. Way worse. Yeah. So, so Nah. Much worse. So Nah has. I mean, she's doing all the Valkyrie's attacks, and they get yeah. mixed up. There's no set pattern, but she has vocal cues. She's got a lot more clear vocal cues and yeah. sound cues. Whereas, oh my God, dog, get off my lap. Uh, <laughs> but but note, Kelly, that oh, if God. I have to hear one more time, kneel to me or worship me from the Berserker mm -hmm. King, I almost threw my con controller across from it. I don't do that. I was like, uh -huh. I hate you so much right now. It, like I said, it, it was seriously put all together it was it was definitely more than three hours. I just lost so many hours, mm -hmm. and every single time I would get just a little bit further, and because it's the split second breaking his attacks, mm -hmm. especially that arena wide Bifrost one. Mm -hmm. If you like, and if your cooldowns are set, like I had to slot everything I had to make myself have enough health to mm -hmm. beat him. Yeah, this yeah. is brutal. At this point, I'm thinking that's not a notch I need on my gamer belt because I. I said I, I was going to platinum it. You did it. I did it. You did but it. At what cost? Exactly. Exactly. So we have another question too from Rafiki, which was directed at Kelly, but I'm sure Cipher and Zero, you'll probably have answers to it as well. Um, 
I won't because I don't know this shit. But it was because music, any specific leitmotif really got to you. Oh, I don't well, know this off, shit either. Yes, you, yes, you do. Because it's, he, he's just asking which musical theme breaks your Okay, heart, use basically. regular fucking English. <laughs> I'm not a musician. I don't know this shit. So it, it, was, it was directed at Kelly, but I anyone know. else who has an answer. Like, Which thing do you like to hum the most? <laughs> um, well, as far as hummability, this, this game has quite a bit of hummability. True. Um, Faye's theme really is beautiful. Um, and I think that's that's the light motif that sticks out the most. But give me a Nordic choir singing Kratos' theme, and I'm just, I'm a happy panda. I'm just, I'm like a raccoon with a tra- with a garbage bale. I am so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like that picture of the possum going, oh, garbage. Like that's me. Yeah, the simplicity of of how Bear McCurry handled Kratos' late motif, 100. percent because it's so simple, and that's where you find the most genius. The the, the simple, dis- simple yeah, and the the way he he talks about discovering that theme, and the oh yeah, that works. And then I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? That would have taken me days. I I don't think so, Rafiki. I can't do it better than she did. Um, that's a Norse singer, Peace by the way. I don't know. I don't know her. Um, okay, that's actually I like that. I'm Add that to your list of titles. <laughs> musical trash band. Um, nice. I can't remember the name of the woman, the 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 woman who does face theme, but she's Ivor. got such a. I yeah. Well, why should, why can't I remember that? This freaking Valhalla character. Um, <laughs> it's this. It's hard to describe because I don't want to describe it as folk singing voice, but it's like got that overtone to it. It's so cool. Um, but yeah, no, Kratos' theme, it's just so foreboding. It is. It's so foreboding, and it's used to build up so much stress. <laughs> and uh, in a good way. I mean, just like most movies, if you took the music out of this game, you would lose a lot of the emotional impact. Mm-hmm. Like, try watching Jaws without the soundtrack. It's not scary at all. It's not. Um, and that's kind of the same thing here. But I, I don't think you can ask me to pick a favorite Bear McCreary. What, 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 why do you not saying zero? Say it. Say it. It's a spoiler. It's show. the whole repla- uh, music replacement theory. If you take the death of Brock, take out the music, replace it with where are you from, you sexy thing. You know, <laughs> Benny Hill theme. Benny Hill theme, yakety sax. Yeah. I'm blue, dabba dee. Brock just died. <laughs> oh, <that's- laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I'm I don't know what that is. Camera. Please clip that. Please I don't know what that. that is, and I don't I, know if I need to. So, quest, also, question for me, and I've, uh, Kelly, you, we've talked about this briefly with you, but I'm curious if anyone else obsessed over this the way I did. Did mm-hmm. anyone else spend entirely too much time, either the first time you noticed they were there or any other point, obsessively killing all of the little glowy beetles because you were convinced they were going to unlock something? I thought they were so. I thought they <laughs> I were going to be an achievement. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm glad that was not just me. I thought it would be an achievement to smoosh as many bugs as I could. <laughs> I was like, the because first they time... stood out too much. Yeah, I was like down the cave right at the beginning of the game, and I saw them all there. I was going through, like just chucking the axe every last one I could find, and then when nothing happened, scouring the cave because I was convinced I had just missed one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I'm yeah, so no, glad that, that was, was not just uh... me. <laughs> Yeah, no, that was. Oh, and we can't we can't talk about achievements without talking about the fact that reuniting the Hafgafa together gives you Fulgafa. That's the name of the achievement. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, I didn't my Jesus. That. <sighs> um, A lot of the achievements are very punny. I love that so much. <laughs> I know. I figured you would. Oh wow! I can't, if I didn't notice that, I, think, I and, did and the quest. Course, I just didn't notice the achievement thing. And of course, the fact that in a completely non-story uh, necessary area. You find out that Faye was a badass bitch. She Hell to say, yes. Fuck you, Thor. And Faye you're like, fucked up. Why Thor. is there yes. a frozen lightning bolt here? Well, Thor got his ass handed to him. That's why. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I mean, I don't know Deborah Ann Wall, but I am fairly sure she could hand my ass to me. So she's tall. 
She is tall. Taller than me? Uh, about the same height. Because I, I'm not gonna lie, like I have that the list, the cosplay lists of things I'll never be able to cosplay because I don't have the skill to make it or the money to commission it. Faye's definitely on there. Mm. Somebody could... make me one of those Valkyries. Um, make me some of that Valkyrie armor, man. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, Blickmore's I mean... lurking around. <laughs> I mean. Uh, also, the Valkyries never took off their helmets. I'm like, are all Mandalorians? No, yes. One hundred percent. This is the way. I just. I it will is. just say that I love that Berlioz got here today and is already going pirate. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think Berlioz is ever going to say anything mean to me or tell me to be quiet because I'm, I'm apparently the first person that ever noticed his name. So. Oh God! The, yeah, the joy from that was palpable. You could palp it. <laughs> Could palpate it. Oh my god! Uh, Wait, did you say you could palp it? Yes, it's palpable. You could palp it. But it's palpate. You squeeze. Oh, and you god. just did that. Never mind. I did. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. There's your, there's thank your you. gif, internet. There's your gif. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it help with your Mingander looming behind you? <laughs> nope. There yep, there it is. Wait, there it is. Scratch, yeah. We scratch his nose. You gotta give the little, like, the little chin scratch. So that, no. Oh my God. Nope. The dog just I realized as I did it. See, I realized as I was doing it that there's your gift from me. <laughs> wow. That's like Antonio wagging his finger at people during the live show. <laughs> I just scratched, like, I did my head scratch on your Gander, and the dog just looked up at me like I had like, like, insulted his mother. <laughs> I, wait. Cypher, help. What's up? Hi, I Cypher. Was, I was going to say that we, 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 so we're at the two hours we booked for this. I'm game with just hanging out and talking more shit about Ragnarok. But sure, I know I it's later. I know it's later for Kelly and uh, Pirate. So I'm down to keep talking if you all are. Um, I'll just get up long enough so that PJ can order his dinner because the app's on my phone. Yeah, let's take a break maybe, and I'm going right. to come back off there. But I yeah, use let's some take water. let's take five to ten. I'm gonna it'll be a silent break because I have not figured out routing audio with the with guest star and mm. my mixer. So unfortunately, it's gonna be a silent break. But please go stretch. We've been going for two hours straight. Um. So we'll take five to ten, stretch, get snack, whatever. Um, and yeah, we'll be back soon. I will put up the BRB, enjoy. It's got a five minute timer, so it will reset at least once. See you soon.
Everyone can hear me. We're back. We have the opportunity for a bit longer. Um, I how much of that meat have you drank, pirate? I mean, that, I opened it tonight. That was that's why I asked you. I'm just mad because I have to work tomorrow, and so I'm having to be a responsible adult. I have to do the cooking stream tomorrow. <laughs> Please don't burn down your appointment. Hi, everyone. We're back. <laughs> we're just this talking. Is... Now, this is the post show. We really are just getting silly. Um, I mean, this is what we're like with each other. So This is true. This is <laughs> us when the cameras are not on us. Only with less weird facial expressions for me. <laughs> Correct. Not really. Yeah, we're, no, we're Rafiki's right. This is only 14.5 14, 14. ABV. This is fine. Yeah, you're fine. That's not that bad. It's really not. Nope. I'm nope. going to lean down and take a bite of my of my donut. You all continue. No, no one okay. Here we see so the I'm cipher. Pitching... Oh man, I don't have my Go XLR. I can't do my narrator voice. That's okay. We, we'll. It's in the other room. We'll fix it. We in have post. the cipher in her natural habitat, feasting upon a donut. Long has been the tracking. The hunt concluded, as she claimed surprise. A sweet, delicious treat. The soul of the donut nourishing her existence. Let's watch. Okay, Sir David. So it's been nice knowing you, Zero Kelly. What yep. have you the pitch? <laughs> yep. I'm just like, what the fuck is happening here? I'm pitching still the body pillow. This is yes. hard to... I'm also S pitching... And Sorry, I understand... I'm going to jump on that real quick. I, I'll let you get back to this, but I need to rant about this. It's bullshit that Square Enix only made one Buster Sword body pillow. They need to fucking make more of those yes. and market them. Yes. Sorry, continue. They need to make a <laughs> they need to make a Hyakushiki Gundam pillow so I can get it for Justin and he can just sleep with it. Um that'll make him happy. <laughs> Sorry, uh, continue. <laughs> and I have another merch idea for God of War. But it seems to concern everybody when I talk about it. Kiros! My baby. <laughs> um, Mimir head fanny pack. Oh my god. Or crossbody purse. Actually, okay. if there was wait, a Mandy in chat, she probably could do that. Okay. I am on board with the, the Mimir head satchel. Kelly, you know why I have an issue with you referring to this as a Mimir head fanny pack. <laughs> I do know. <laughs> that might be why I said it. <laughs> wow. Oh my god. There are lots of ways to shut my mirror up, but that <laughs> I you know what? I'm just gonna You said we were in the after dark portion. I now. mean he went he went into that tent with Sig Sigurd, and I'm just saying mm -hmm. He's the most intelligent man in the world and has a lot of uses for his tongue. That's it's true. Yeah, gross. Actually, you said you're the one who went there first. Anatomically, where is? Oh no! Look, there's a reason it's called giving head. No, horns are no. handles. Do, 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 do. <laughs> no, his head is cut off halfway through his vocal cords. Yes, magic. That's true. Hand magic. Mean... Because it's, magic. it's dull, you idiot. It'll hurt more. Yeah, yes. I mean, if, if your question about how the severed head is still talking is the lack of vocal cords, I feel like we've gone a little far past the point. <laughs> um, I mean, I do have the sign in my living room that says, let's talk about serial killers. And it's like one of the first things you see when you come in here. So, And my parents got me the notebook that says list of bodies I buried in the woods. And that's just silly because I wouldn't write it down. That's epic. Yeah, come on. You also wouldn't bury them in the woods. You'd use a pig farm. Pigs eat anything. Mm -hmm. Pig farm or uh, vats of acid. Yep. No, no, <clears throat> no. Because there was a British murderer who did that, John Drake Haig, and they were able to we acid. Go. The acid did not eat away all the teeth or the dental work bridges, and they were able to identify it that way. If you have any questions Welcome about serial chat, killers everybody. or magical decapitated raconteurs, please enter them in chat now. You know who I am. All of you know who I am. Mm -hmm. I uh, This is how I default. I talk about terrible things and make jokes out of it. 
Mm -hmm. um, one of Kavassier's poems is talking about him fighting Karappa the Rapper, I think. I'm yes. Sorry, what? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because then Kratos says he won't talk about it. Because <laughs> yeah. we had mentioned earlier, of course, all of Kavassier's pro, uh, poems in this game relate oh. back to previous PlayStation titles. Okay. Here we go. Further games. Huh. There's the artifacts set in this game where they're picking up things from the different cultures and Kratos knows about them. And in the first, in 2018, there are panels showing Tyr visiting Egypt. Yeah. So there's a lot of pantheons that we could go to. I'm just saying. Yep. Also, I'm going to point out that Set was also a redhead. Anyway. Okay, you and this whole ginger thing. They used to leave us out on the hills to die. Anyway. I did tell you that when I was born, my hair was very <laughs> red. And I, had I know struggles. they made a mistake with both of us and they just nurtured us and allowed us to live. But anyway, it's <laughs> not where I was going, but okay. <laughs> I was just going to say my mom mm -hmm. thought they brought her a white kid. <laughs> I, I mean, I got to tell you, a lot of the Scottish uh, people who were on the wrong side of the Jacobite revolution, um, they fled to the islands. So you actually get quite a few redheads. So. Oh, I'm sure it just changed as I got older. Because I still have freckles if I ever see the sun Yay. again. I don't like the sun. It is a ball of death. Um, there's not that much sun in... Uh, it's also interesting, too, that climate change affects affects each of the realms differently. Right? So, ooh, it's a fat cat. <gasps> uh, side there. Hi, hi. There was a blip. Um, um, so, you have Fimble Winters freezing in Midgard. Uh, Vanaheim turned into Florida. Um, Spartalheim is, I don't even know. They're just. Goodbye, pirate. Gross. It was nice seeing you. Bye. <laughs> Bye, pirate. I was like, I'm out. Yep. Deuces. Was... You mentioned Florida. He's gone. I got oh. better, baby. You want to get a kitty? I can't pick up bones because the last time I picked up bones, I threw him in the carrier because there was a fire. And so he's mad at me and won't let me pick him up anymore. <laughs> I have no more kitty. Hmm. Although Sonya likes to stick his face. <gasps> his... Smooches. Mm -hmm. All the he smooches. Likes to, he likes to do babe kisses. Yeah, our last cat used to groom PJ's beard. It was pretty cute. Yes, uh, uh, Burley yeah. is. Pirate has a cat and a dog. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have a very large, uh, a large cat named Bones, but um, he is tetchy at the best of times. But I'm not even joking. Last week, I grabbed him halfway through dinner and threw him in a carrier because somebody downstairs set their apartment on fire. So he's still mad at me. I, mean, I, I would like to keep my hands. Better be people in my building tomorrow during the cooking stream. Ooh. Pirate. So now you have to talk about the cooking stream because you brought it up multiple times. Yep, it's okay. It. Sarius is back in New York. She can call the fire brigade. That's now, why are you doing the cooking stream? Yeah, why oh. are you doing this? Oh, because we raised a thousand dollars for the National Children's Alliance during a charity fundraiser, thanks to certain people um, yeah. <laughs> who both donated and were part of the stream for it. So, yeah, chari charitable fundraiser redemption. Because I um, am on the same level as Kelly when it comes to cooking, in that we have both been able to burn water. No, I you made jello. you made Thanksgiving dinner or Christmas what? dinner. Um, I, I put I put stuff in an oven, and you're still here to tell us. Just shut up with the chopping rice, okay? <laughs> last night, last night when we were playing Back for Blood, Dimples and Dice like made fun of the fact that one of the cards that I have means I can punch food in the maps and turn them into meals. We don't know how that works, and it'll either turn into a mediocre meal, which is like a TV dinner, or like a giant chicken. And I was like, it's it's called like the the gourmet dinner. I'm like, it's gourmet because I chopped the rice and he almost spit out his drink. So what? Do you not get that reference, Zero? So, I just uh, wasn't expecting it tonight. I was not expecting it tonight. There was a lot of things I was not expecting tonight. That is one of them. <laughs> well, wow. I mean true. I do do they even list Yormagander's voice actor? I don't think they do. I have zero I idea. I don't believe so. 
because there is somebody voicing him because he does speak. Although I don't know which language he's speaking because it's not Old Norse. Mm. Completely manufactured for the game. Mm -hmm. Wait. And his little lips are so cute when you mix the ocean. Oh. <laughs> Berlioz said that they managed to burn soup. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that's easy. That's easy. I I'm still trying to figure out how you burned jello. Because it wasn't instant jello pudding. It was actual gelatin that you had to put on the stove top. And they didn't tell me to turn off the boiling part of the stove before you put the gelatin in. I mean, that's all. I bad. am the reason for warning labels. So, speaking of which, I should Can just you imagine go get it. <laughs> to be poor PJs. I, feel <laughs> um, I do have the God of War cookbook. Oh. Yes, we wanted to get that ourselves. We saw it in uh, Barnes and Noble, and immediately thought of you. I ah. have um, the Discworld cookbook. Nice. Mm. How is the God of War cookbook? Um, good. I was thinking I could go get it, and we could talk about a couple it's recipes hard. before we start to wind down. Because well, sure, I know it's Definitely. an hour later for. Pirate and Kelly, and I'm also like moderately hungry, and I'm afraid I will be hungover if I don't eat. Ooh, so yes, eat. keep talking. I'm Apparently, gonna... we're ordering pizza. I just got handed nice. my phone. Uh, I would order pizza, but it'll take an hour to get here. No, oh. ours is around the corner. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, even if I order a small pizza just for me, it'll still take forty minutes to an hour. Well, that's silly. It's a whole pizza. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's nice to have the um the like mom and pop places around the corner. Oh yeah. Definitely. I am sad though because there's a bon me shop that makes some banging bon me and they're only open from eleven to three. That is extremely narrow. Yeah. Cash only eleven to three. Wow. Whereas across the way the crepe shop knows that it's a college town and it's a crepe shop across from the bars and so it opens at eleven PM. They know Crepes who they're at eleven? God. That, yeah, that reminds... because they're right across the street from the whiskey bar. <laughs> that reminds me of the sandwich shop that um, used to exist in the uh, the Hell college yes. town. I I used to live in back when I lived in Oklahoma, uh, which was the Fat Sandwich Company. Oh yeah, which had yeah. the most obscene sandwiches I've ever heard of in the entire in my entire life. Like, they're, they're the ones that had the chicken donut. Did you say Oklahoma? Yeah, I lived in Oklahoma for eight years. I'm Did you so know that about sorry. me? It wasn't so. Bad. I actually lived in Norman, so it was like the town that grew up around the university. So yeah, it, no, I, I, yeah, it wasn't super bad, but I mean, the prairie dogs are nice. Oh no, Berlio, sorry about that. Uh, the the bot bopped you. Oh, oh. For, oh. I, I'm amazed. <laughs> that... I'm the only one who's allowed to talk at all caps here, friend. <laughs> I was gonna say, I'm amazed you have all caps protection on knowing Kelly. Like that's... I do. I, I, I am laughing because I got a message after one of the things. It, it wasn't the four of us, and it was Tanya and I talking about something. I got a message from somebody saying, You were being awfully silly. Were you like drinking a lot or something? I was like, No, that's just what I'm like. like I hope nobody in chat expected any further God of War spoiler talk. By the way, this is what you get for the rest of the stream. It's just us bullshitting. Unless you ask us questions about God of War, in which <laughs> yeah, case we will that's... probably do it. But can you imagine um... like Kratos going to Egypt and like punching Anubis in the face. I mean, that'd be quite a setup. Mm -hmm. It would be pretty cool. Oh, I'm this sorry, is interesting. Hmm. Um, all of the contents are based on realms. So there's food oh. for Realm Between Realms, Midgard, Alfheim, Vanaheim, Asgard, Trottelheim, Jotunheim, Muspelheim, Helheim, and Niflheim. And then there is dietary considerations at the back of the book. Well, that's nice uh, of them. Okay. I need to know what the recipes for Helheim are. Um, Astrid's cheese and Yellow. leek souffle, Ooh. avocado eggs Benedict, squid Ooh. ink pasta. Oh, I need a justification for avocado eggs Benedict being tied to Helheim. I will flip because that that's where the hipsters are going. I was gonna no, I was, <laughs> I was gonna say eggs Benedict is old white people food, so it's like. <laughs> I mean, I say that as somebody who eats eggs Benedict. So. <laughs> I'm just going to go to the page and see what's there. Because, well. Okay, I'm the... getting a slice of white pizza because I love white pizza. And it's not just because I'm 
ridiculous. Oh, oh we, we have an answer to the, we have an answer to the earlier question from Phil Mir. Um, mm -hmm. I looked it up. Apparently, Jorman Gander is voiced by lead sound designer Mike Niederquell. Uh, oh. After his voice got remixed and run through like five different programs. Yep, makes sense. Aw, that's so cute. I'm like, I nobody should have ever given me a Go XLR. By the way, <laughs> why? Because like in the final stage of the newest campaign of of Back for Blood, yeah, I might have been drinking more than tonight, and I was with uh pj and our our other two like irl friends playing and the last stage is in a hockey arena so i may or may not have just turned on the announcer voice with the reverb oh and did God. it the entire time in the hockey arena uh where did pirate go what do you mean where did pirate go all of a sudden my chat the chat took over like 90 percent of my screen and i can't see y'all oh, oh weird that's weird um Prax, who's Naula Silverhand? Hmm? Kratos that... versus Nala Silverhand. I saw him like from I just like Silverhand like Cyberpunk? Is that no? Because I the only Silverhand I know is Laryl <clears throat> Silverhand. Yeah. So I am very I confused. I mean, why are all of you in chat so pushing away my, my friends? There's very few people who can stand to be with me for this long time. <laughs> <laughs> I can't find them. I mean, mood. Oh, no, I meant to order the food. Listen, I, all, all you need to know is that my husband came in and handed me the phone, heard me go through three different subjects in those 10 seconds and said, did you take your pill? <laughs> I got to ask Cypher, any standout recipes for Asgard? Uh, let's see. The official cookbook oh. of the Nine Realms, by the way. Uh, we got the response from Prax. Nala Silverhand is the king of the Irish gods. And if me, oh, that's, that's right. right. And I would Cause... love to see them actually do Irish myth rather than England. <laughs> England does Celtic. England does Celtic. No. Sorry, what was the realm zero? Uh, Asgard. Asgard. Oh, we've got 69 people in chat. <laughs> nice. Nice. I... I, I like the England does Celtic fitting the Debbie does Dallas because we certainly <laughs> fit the I Irish. Mean... I was gonna say, you both... <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's wrong. Smoked salmon dip, lamb riblets, cult blog, <gasps> wild boar ragu, Ooh. soccer kringler, glug, and honeyed spirit. Ooh. I have no idea what a cult blog is. Now I need to look at so, it. A wild boar ragu. I, I'm just like, wait, wild boar ragu. Is that not just the brand of a pasta sauce? Ragu no, is no. a pasta sauce. <laughs> well, it's 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 a <laughs> pasta sauce. I have to put the quotes because practice. <laughs> <laughs> the Wegman's pasta sauce kicks us butt. Gotcha. Out. Fair. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you saw the tweet I made earlier today, uh, Pirate, about uh, Death to the False Emperor, and I posted a picture of Chef Boyardee. I did not see that, but that is yeah. fantastic, and I love it. That, that one's for you. Appreciate you. I know that PJ wants to make this kind of weird. Oh. It's like blood pudding, but a pancake. It's like a Finnish blood pancake, and I'm like, not going to eat that. No, that sounds horrible. I'm not going to eat it. Um, Code Pilar is basically got? Swedish meatballs. Yes. Oh. So meatballs... Ikea. Then. Well, here's mm, the picture Ikea. of them. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They're like dumplings. <laughs> well, it says meat. Like it, there's three things. That's there's meat. two things you got to make: so meatballs meat. and gravy. Damn right. I got lost in IKEA the last time I went there. The one in Paramus is huge. I I like how they have oh, a the... difficulty rating for these recipes. I I, I like I, that. I honestly do. Oh, the, the, I think. I'm actually, I'd have to go be, go through the kitchen and grab it, which I'm not going to do. But I suspect that's made by the same people who did my Final Fantasy XIV they, cookbook. They, because oh, yeah. they had the and exact the, the same book, layout. Yep. It's the yep. same like, thing. They also the did the font was the same. Yeah. Yep. And same yep. we've got, the difficulties. Yeah, yeah we've got the additions. World of Warcraft cookbook. I want to get the D&D cookbook, the Heroes Feast one. Um, um, yeah, no, the Discworld one um, is the print from England. So I yes. have to redo everything into... Mm -hmm. If I ever tried, granted, I could just make you know, nanny ox. I have made one wobbler. recipe from that cookbook, and it was the strawberry wobbler. Yeah, big pink <laughs> oh. and wobbly. Yeah, they don't have the um, 
the the haunted French pancakes in there. Um, gives us so, the crepes. Well, you Blanc... want? Oh, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say you said French stuff. I... Have you ever had pain perdu? Yes. Oh, I, want I had one in New York City that was the size of like a lamb shank. Ooh. It's basically pain perdu is like French toast on speed. It's like an entire loaf of bread turned into French toast. You're phrasing it. That just makes me picture French toast, but dusted with cocaine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so pirate to answer what the wild war ragu is. Yes. Um, well, there's a photo of it. I don't know if you can see it. Oh. Oh. I, can see it. Oh. I mean, you wouldn't eat it because it's meat. But no, um, but there's a lot of really good meat substitutes. Like right. there's the, the Wegmans meat substitute. If you did not tell somebody it was vegan, they wouldn't know. It's really um, good. But basically it's pasta. What is this? Is this egg noodle? It looked like um, either egg noodle or the really, I can't think of the name of it. Cracks would know the long, long flat noodles. Uh, it's Popperdell pasta. Popperdell. So yes, basically you you basically make boar stew and cut it up over mm -hmm. over pasta. Mm -hmm. And it the book says <sighs> if you can't find wild boar, the shoulder of a domesticated pig will do. Why why I'm still mad at chat taking up my whole screen. So I, I either have to choose between chat or seeing people. This is not worth it. Just look at chat. I don't know You're how. Good. No. Sucking uh, sucker Kringler is basically a, some kind of pretzel. Catherine said that she would go directly to hard mode. This was listed as hard. It's true. She absolutely would. Um, so one hundred percent. It's basically a sourdough pretzel. If it like. um, if it amuses amuses you, which it probably will. It's not sourdough. So so my <sighs> grandmother my grandmother left me her recipes. I couldn't figure out why. I am not good. I can bake better than I can cook because bake, I you know, it's very, very set instruction. It's a science, yeah. But there's at least one recipe in there where she had beautiful handwriting, but then as she got older um, and her handwriting got worse. And on the back of the card, when I was reading it, it just says, Kelly, don't even try. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, if anyone fancies a scotch egg, that in here. Yes. Oh, those scotch eggs. Oh, so good. Oh, well, there's a recipe scotch for eggs. scotch eggs. And it is listed as hard difficulty. Yes. Oh, it is. Because scotch eggs are fucking difficult to make. Yeah. To, to, I mean, I've n I haven't had one in, in years that wasn't overcooked in the middle because it's supposed to be mm -hmm. soft boiled in the middle. Yeah. Uh, Hala onion bread. Hala, hala French toast is good. Mm -hmm. Yes, but it's onion bread. That's good stuff. Uh, a recipe for Brock. Pour one out for Brock. It says freaking gratitude. Um, so yes. I don't know what it is. It's oh, it's a lamb roast. Mm. Yeah. Basically, yeah. yeah, it's a big hunk of lamb. That's surprising. I would have thought the recipe for Brock would have been the skewer. Oh my what god. What did the Yoten eat? Uh, oh yeah. my <laughs> god. Pirates. <laughs> After I brought you mead, you motherfucker. I know. Shipped it all the way from London and carried it in a suitcase. I, okay, I can't say anything. Okay. Earlier, I made the joke in chat up when we were talking about Final Fantasy merch that I really wanted a chibi Aerith pin cushion. Okay, so here we are. Oh, no. I Fuck make that joke all chat. the time. I came into Pirates <laughs> chat and they were in like a place that was in a pond and I said, why is she there? She doesn't historically do well around water. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Jesus, and you all talk but about me. I'll put it to you this way, Cypher. When it comes to Catherine going immediately to the hard mode, she taught herself how to make creme brulee because she was bored. That's Catherine. Fire. Damn. Yeah. Okay, so this will be good, and and uh, if any of you get this, in the back for dietary considerations, it lists each realm, each recipe, and there's a check mark if it's vegetarian, vegan, gluten-free, or dairy-free. Hell yes. I mean, honestly, I'm not surprised because one thing we haven't touched on in this whole chat is the amazing accessibility options that literally yes. won them an yes. award. Yes. And the music and the writing and the voice mm -hmm. acting. Oh, yeah. Ooh, but Apple the accessibility Apple. options I actually turned on during a stream um, 
And I mean, the fact that there is a slight sound when you're about to hit something for people mm -hmm. that need a little bit more visual guide, colorblind mode. God, that looks good. Yeah. It was, just, it was amazing. Oh, that looks so good. To, to, to continue with that too, we should talk about how not only did they have the incredible accessibility options within Ragnarok, they didn't take the easy option of, because they had to rebuild shit that they could have just taken that they built for the 2018 one but they had to rebuild so much shit rather than reusing it to make it work with that and on two different could... platforms initially yeah. mm -hmm. do you want to what you want to know something that i just thought about and i mean it was like a subconscious thing so brock is is he acts like he's the one that's all like brock has no feelings you know he's mm -hmm. rough around the edges he's the one that defends atreus Yes. Yep. And he's the one that catches the misuse of the name. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I think that's just kind of a nice little aside that, you know, this character that a lot of people saw as one dimensional is definitely not. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. He's very, it, it's like he's very protective of the people he chooses. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, again, you can talk all day long about just the voice acting and the physical work. But I, I really do want to give kudos to the writers because performers can't do the work without nope. good writing. Yeah. Because um, you get a lot of cases where the actors are wonderful, but the writing is... Mm -hmm. <coughs> Witcher! Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you're... In all seriousness, you're in touch. Like, I'm an Netflix, actor. Netflix. And we've seen, what we've seen what happens. <laughs> I'm an actor. We've seen what happens when I try and read my own words. It's terrible. I, I should... I, it's so much better when I'm reading other people's. Like that's, I've read had great scripts. I've had some absolute dog shit. I mean, scripts. yeah. And as far there's only as so much you can do, as far as um, it's not the same as the accessibility options. But since we brought up Hellblade before, uh, speaking as someone who deals with some of those particular mental health issues, mm -hmm. that was another amazing feat of sound engineering and everything else um, from them. And I'm kind of sad that it's apparently going to be an Xbox exclusive, the second one. Um, but uh, like when you think about sound engineering, you're, you're, <laughs> there was somebody in a chat once that was just like, well, it's just sound. I'm like, so really? it's just air. It's not just sound. There's no just in that sentence. No. Um, uh, so, for instance, like, I don't know if have, you, have any of you actually played Hellblade? I know Tanya did a little I bit. Haven't. I have, did not, and I refused to play it because of, I know. I know. Uh, because, no, I'm going to say it. Okay, please say it. Oh, because of the fucking locks that the Viking or Celtic fucking character had. Pictish. But yet, I can't have those same locks in games with actual mm -hmm. black characters yep. yep also reminded me um, too much of someone who literally wore fake dreadlocks and then tried to act persecuted as a white german celtic uh no thank you um it looks on the second one that they went more with the kind of matted hair thing which so is what it much should have more, been yeah which is much more like tim minchin has you'll know pirate mm -hmm. like that kind yeah. of matted hair uh which is what the picture stuff has i mean what the but Pikmin, not Picked, Pikmin. the picks, yeah. The picks. <laughs> Again, the Robin Hood Prince of Thieves reference. <laughs> Pikmin. <laughs> uh, but like in Hellblade, the reason, like I couldn't play it with the camera on because I couldn't have lights in my eyes or uh, zero because of the, um, it's a surround sound binaural audio and they achieved it by putting a condenser microphone in the middle of the room and having all the voice the people who did her voices in her head circling the room speaking and then one would mm. run up and say something mm -hmm. and it's so disorienting it is um, it's super disorienting and it also pushed forward more new sound stuff for other games and i'm really hope this was my original point i'm really hoping that god of war doing this with accessibility yes mm -hmm. yeah goes forward yeah. Um, we had a question in the chat about food in Jotunheim, and then we probably should wrap it up because it's almost nine for me. It's almost ten for a couple of yeah. you, and almost eight for uh, zero. Uh, if Melissa the pizza gets here first. You'll get to hear Scotty sing the song of his people. <laughs> uh, Melissa asks, "What's in Jotunheim?" And the answer is Terra Stew. Um, 
Sorry, I'm wearing new contacts. I can't read. Stefano, Galbigium, venison stew, vegetable stew, oh, olive bread, and apple dumplings. That's what is in your Apple room. dumplings! Yay! You had me at venison. Also, um, by the way, speaking of Helheim, if you've never had squid ink pasta, it's delicious. It's, it's delicious, right. yes. If it's um, done right. It can be done really badly. <laughs> also, just uh, speaking of Helheim, if you haven't gone back there post-game, Yes, there's, there's another little heartbreaking element in there. Uh, in in Ragnarok or in yeah. um, in Ragnarok. I think I did. I think I've got. Well, I mean, I I must have. I went and got the one raven. Every but... every realm was a hundred percented for me, so I must it's, have done it. Yeah, the uh, the fact that whilst you don't see her, you hear Sinmara. Oh, oh no. God, that part, the part where she's sobbing and screaming because yeah. she knows that he's dead. Yep. Oh, well, God, that broke my heart. Yep. And Thanks, she, Pirate. Well, You're welcome. Yeah, no, she's just sobbing and screaming. And Freya said, well, do you think we should go tell her what happened? And Kratos <laughs> just looks at her and says, she knows. She knows. Yeah. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, uh, that's that's heartbreaking on so many levels um yep. <laughs> yeah um, also mm -hmm. sorry case in point balder can't feel pain no wonder he was tattooed over that much of his body mm -hmm. i mean there are people who can feel pain who are fully i mean tatted. he was wearing, I fell asleep he was wearing during my pants. last tattoo he was wearing pants but i bet you <laughs> oh yeah oh my wow yeah i mean people get prince albert so Mm -hmm. yeah. It's true. Is he sporting yeah. Yggdrasil, though? Anywho. Terrible. Yeah, I know. I can't I get... Know. I, I wanted to get mm -hmm. tattoos, and the surgeon was like, haha, no, you can't have them for, like, six to twelve months. I was like, oh, okay. Fine. I guess I won't ruin the new joint you put in me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. You almost... You bunny hopped as it was, and I was worried it was going to pop out. <laughs> yeah, my mom yelled at me mm -hmm. for that one. We all did. I know. Um, it's your fault. For do being nice. Oh, right. Like, yeah. how is that my fault? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Part he, has a, he absolutely has a door tattooed around his butt. I don't be... even. You need to stop right now. Unless it's no, no speak, please. Wait, does it say speak, friend, and enter? Because that would be kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's, it's Baldur's Gate. Oh, there it God. is. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bless you, pirate. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yours was better, though. <laughs> Yours was better. You are why we can't have nice things. I know. I know this. All right. And on oh, that no. cheerful note, we're going to say what we're all up to. <laughs> and I'm going to figure out food. And then we may <laughs> hang out and bullshit later more, but not on camera. <laughs> <laughs> um and we're gonna go in reverse order so kelly you get to go first who are you what do you yep. do and where can we find you next uh hi i'm kelly i'm the opera geek uh you can find you're... me on my channel what you're looking the wrong way <laughs> yeah i know i was looking at my cat because i don't oh. trust him that's fair, uh, fair. he's staring at me <laughs> and he's sitting on an all black sweatshirt and my cat is all black so all you see is the eyes staring at you i'm like oh it's the void die um you can usually find me on my channels on Sunday and Tuesday. We are currently replaying The Witcher uh, 3 Wild Hunt Next Gen, in which Kelly discovers that uh, she forgot how hard the game is when it's not on New Game Plus. <laughs> because I'm playing it on um, Blood and Broken Bones, because I always mm. I already did a Death March stream, and I'm never fighting Deadlock on Death March again. Mm -mm. Especially because I had Doug on that stream, and he was friggin' MS <laughs> paying me the entire time. Nice. Um, uh, other than that, I am a, a professional singer who is no gigs or anything, so just look for me on Twitch, I guess. <laughs> or hire Kelly. Or hire, hire Kelly. Kelly. All I'm saying is there's, you know, I'm... The world needs a parasite, Eve remake, <coughs> and I need to yes, be an antagonistic villain who can sing your opera for you. I'm just saying. Mm. I can sing your opera. Mm -hmm. All right, that's it. That's me. Zero. 
Hey everyone, my name is Zero Reynolds, aka Zer Jester, aka Baldur's Tattoo Artist, who can tell you that his safe word is Ivor. You can find me Aww. Monday through Friday streaming on Twitch, where I show people how to make cool, geeky builds, everything from miniature painting to fire trucks. Oh, they're coming to take me away. Uh, miniature oh. painting <laughs> to, Listen, to don't building. Say anything about that, last, last week was a four alarm fire here, okay? So. Uh, is everything okay on that, by the way? Uh, the first floor still smells like smoke, but our floor's fine, yeah. Okay. I was not responsible for that. Uh, but yeah, that's where you can find me. I do things. Pirate? I'd be so concerned if you were responsible for that. I would have me too. so many questions. Um, hi, I'm the painting pirate, Chris Gineas, uh miniature painter, variety streamer, Final Fantasy nerd. I uh, stream over at my channel, usually Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern will be my first ever cooking stream, which I'm doing because of a charity incentive. Uh, I cannot cook to save my life. So that will be fun and interesting. So sh we'll see if I stream ever again after that or if I've burned my apartment down. Um, <laughs> Don't joke I'm about also... that. What were we just talking about? Don't joke about that. It's, it's fine. I live like literally two blocks away from the fire department. It's fine. Oh, um, but also, well, I, 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 am... can't, I, I can say that the Audio Technica headphones really work for noise canceling because I did not hear that fire <laughs> alarm until good to almost know. too late. Oh. Um, but also, uh, join me after <laughs> next um, next Saturday is I've been doing a playthrough of all of the Final Fantasy series, going through from one up until the end. I'm starting eight next Saturday, which is my favorite game of all time. My dog is named Kiros. My previous dog was named Squall. I'm going to be insufferable. So come join me for you that. You are because guess what? Guess who's going to show up in your stream and do nothing but make fun of the game? Is it you? This guy. I'm down for it. I mean, if the whole game was about Laguna, I'd be fine. Laguna is my favorite Final Fantasy character of all time. Laguna, like even PJ who hates eight, he's like, if it was about Laguna, it would be mm -hmm. great. Yeah. But Squall is just, never mind. We're not going into that right now. We'll do it later. That's me, hi. Dear Cypher. I caused this shenanigan read. <laughs> <laughs> it's my channel. It's my fault. Um, but yeah, I'm Cypher Tier. I'm here most of the time. Um, let's see what else. Um, in case you missed it earlier today, you got to announce that Fen, my dark, my black dice society character, is coming to Idol Champions. So um, she is available next Wednesday, the 11th. I'll be doing a bunch of promo streams, a bunch of cool stuff with V, c &E games, with uh, Obaloran. But next Thursday on my channel at 5 Central, 3 Pacific, we'll be doing, not an unlocking because I already have been, but walking through all of her gear, what she does with the other Black Dice Society characters, and kind of just showing off what she does with an announcement of her cool skin as well on Wednesday. Um, what else? Also, the notebook I just sent might have also been because Ben just got added. I was getting there. Yeah. It's luckily still in front of me. Um, <laughs> she thought it was what we sent, Chris, and I was like, no. I know. She, I got the text message asking me if what we sent was from that. It's like, no, no, that's there's more to come from. What so we Kelly sent me this. Nice. It reads list of people who underestimated me and how that worked out for them. Very yeah. nice. Um, but yes, Fen comes to the game next week. Um, I had the tweet ready to go. So again, be here next be here next Thursday at 5 Central for um, walking through Fen's story, her gear, etc. Rivals War Deep is back February 5th, and I'm playing kind of whatever I feel like we're doing mini painting. I just painted Jormungander, so yay. Um, and we're going to go, yes, a Yormi. So we're going to... Can... Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Can I cap us off with a Brock quote? Sure. Is it the uh, all fucker? Because that's a good one. <laughs> it is the nature of a thing that matters, not its form. Exactly. And with that, I'm going to put up the end screen. We're going to find some raids. So don't go anywhere. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you, Kelly, Pirate, and Zero. This was awesome. Maybe we We're... should do this more often. I'm just saying. I'm absolutely down. Uh, we now we just need a game that we all fall in love with and are willing to talk about for three hours. As, as if we couldn't talk about this for another two or three hours. No, we're gonna make you play Dragon Age Inquisition. Yes. Oh. Yes. Don't make that face. I did tag the artist on Twitter, Kaiju. If you go through uh, the thread that starts with that tweet, don't make that face. 
I mean, I'm just saying, I don't know if that's the best idea. <laughs> well, this time you won't fed sass Inquisitor Federus if you have played this mm -hmm. game. No, but I'll still call Josephine Count of Amontillado. I mean, and then I'll tell Allegra Clark on you. I'm just gonna yeah, and ask Iron Bull if he likes to ride things. Yeah, I mean, I I'm just know, gonna sit you? here and go cough, Witcher cough. What's wrong with that? What's I'm just pointing out that's an excellent topic. Have you played The Witcher? Have I, I played The no, Witcher? No, pirate. pirate. <laughs> oh, <I> got... <laughs> like what? Pirates. I've I've played it. I got to Skellige and got distracted, and never finished oh, it. But I've even played better. it. <laughs> Let's bring Doug on to mess with pirate while he, he plays with yes him. please i will so, do the fucking the i will reason, do the the, the next gen one and okay so here's me. the deal before we before we really end we have kelly plays inquisition and pirate yes. plays the witcher 3 yes i'm down for okay this. so okay well what about you two because we got we got to even this out now we can't just have kelly and i be the only ones who saw let cypher play hatiful boyfriend i played yes. it once for a charity incentive and i fucking hate it that's there the is not enough weed to make me like this game. <laughs> well, it's either that or you get to play you get to play Code Realize with me, which is the game that Brian and I lost in the first 10 minutes. Uh, you know what? I'd rather play that game or Pentiment or anything. Also, playing Howlful Boyfriend has a not great connotation because of who donated for me to play that game. Oh, okay. Yeah. Never mind then. We'll, I'll find, we'll I'll come find up with something the else. You know what? You can play the dating sim where you date people from the Shinsen Gumi. How about that one? Sure. <laughs> you heard it, everybody. She said sure. <laughs> it's it's on video. I said it. I have no idea what I agreed to, but Pirate also agreed to do a cooking stream. So. I am Switzerland. Oh, don't Switzerland. worry. We'll come up with something for you. Like that. No. Well. No, you need to play Capybara Spa on stream. I have played Capybara Spa, but not oh, on so stream. Did I. Okay. Um, um, we're going to come up with something that's going to make you very sad. I Fair think enough. we're going to have a total tonal shift and go raid Curious Joy, who's playing Guilty Gear Strive. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Yes. So thank oh, you all I for hanging out. For PJ. Yes, I've played it. I need to play it with Pirate once Cross Ooh. plays there. That's oh, how they real. play y'all in a fighting game. That's out now. That's Wait till Street Fighter 6 comes out. I'll be there. All right, for real, we're going. I'm putting up the end screen <laughs> and we're going to start a raid. We're going to keep talking. You'll still hear us, but I'm just oh, putting yeah. up an end screen. Mm -hmm. um, also running the credits. So this means that y'all have to friend PJ on PS5 so you can play with me. I don't have a PS5. I'm sorry. Please, sir. Can I have a PS5? <laughs> uh, yes, that's how it is right now because our PS4 is dying. <laughs> I'm going to say something about Doug. About Everyone can still hear us, just so you know. Oh, I know yeah. about about Doug and I making Chris's life hell while he plays Witcher Three. I can't. <laughs> oh, that's right, because Doug liked to wait until I got up from the the desk and then made uh, Geralt's battle cues to make it sound like I was. About <laughs> to die. Oh, I do! I love that man. That's amazing. I'm sorry. That's that Good is night, right up there everyone. with. With Matthew Mercer yelling out, it's high noon during matches just yeah. to fuck with Overwatch yes. players. I love that shit.